Good evening and welcome to the Grand Prairie City Council meeting for Monday, September 30th, 2013, the last meeting of this council term. I'd ask everyone in attendance to rise and join us in singing O Canada. <clears throat> Thank you to the National Film Board for the images of our country and to our very own Grand Prairie Boys Choir for the audio. Uh, we'd move into the agenda and we'd start with the adoption of the previous council meeting minutes. Councillor Crokin. Thank you, Mayor Given. I move the minutes of the city council meeting held September 16th, 2013 be adopted. Thanks very much, Councillor Crokin. Did anyone note any errors or omissions in that set of minutes that we need to catch before we adopt them? Seeing nothing, then I will call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries, and we'd look for a motion for the adoption of the agenda. Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Given. I would move that Council adopt the agenda as presented with the addition of 9.9 .9 Hillside Social Housing Project. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. So a motion for the adoption of the agenda with that additional item that came from our Council Committee of the Whole meeting just prior to this City Council meeting. Any discussion or debate on the agenda as uh, recommended? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries as well. Uh, this brings us to the delegation portion of our agenda, the last delegation portion of uh, our council term. It looks like it's going to be a good one. Uh, so it's, we did have some folks that had let us know that they were going to be here ahead of time, and the first on our list is uh, the Honourable Wayne Drysdale, Minister of Infrastructure and MLA for Grand Prairie Wapiti. Wayne, if you'd like to join us here. Welcome. Well, good evening. Good evening. And as usual, thank you for this opportunity to address Council. I think it's a good opportunity for me to hear the concerns of Council and to give you a brief update on what's going on. I've always appreciated the opportunity to work with this Council and uh, not just on our yearly visits, but throughout the year, pretty regularly we meet with everybody and work together quite well, and thank you very much for that. And also, since the election is coming up and this will be the last council meeting for some members here, I want to thank you for your dedication and hard work to our community and our city over the last term. I know some of you won't be back for sure. Maybe some of you won't be back for other reasons. <laughs> thanks for those who have dedicated themselves and, and uh, congratulations on a term well served. And, and also thanks for you that are putting your name forward to run again. Uh, all the best and uh, be looking forward on the, the election night to the results. So thanks very much for stepping up to serve your community. Um, 
I'll just maybe do a few quick updates and then open it up for questions. That's usually the best part anyway. So. Sure, please. I mean, I think everybody has heard the financial situation of the province has been a little strained in the last few years, but uh, first quarter update this year, things are looking better. I mean, too early to get excited and start thinking we have extra money because, you know, we all depend on the oil price in this province and that can go up and down pretty regular. So although things are looking good today, uh, we'll hope that keeps going throughout the year and we'll be in good shape. Uh, you know, we have to always have to live within our means, and, and we're doing that. Even though we'd like to do lots more in the province, we still have to be fiscal responsible, and we're trying to have, make that strike that balance the best we can going forward. You know, I think you've seen this year we are going to borrow some money for our infrastructure spending. Um, just the other day, the province hit 4 million people, so it's growing fast, and with all that growth, we need more schools and hospitals, and and to the days of paying cash up front for everything for the next 30 years are probably behind us for a while anyway, so we'll, we'll only borrow for important capital infrastructure going forward as needed. Um, you know, that being said, uh, you know, we were in a good position, but we had a major disaster not, what, 100 days ago now or something this spring that's, that's going to put a strain on our budget, but... You know, we did have money set aside in our uh, stability account, and, and uh, we'll use that to offset the floods. I mean, it's going to draw it down a little, but I just, you know, want to assure the rest of Albertans, Albertans that we're not going to be taking away from our infrastructure plan for the whole province to make up for this disaster. We had a capital plan before that, and we're sticking to our original capital plan, and we'll still be building Alberta for all Albertans, and... Uh, We'll see our way through this disaster. Uh, Albertans have pulled together good, as we always do, and I'm sure we'll meet this challenge and we'll prevail through it. So, um, you know, probably one of the more important infrastructure builds for this city is our schools right now. I mean, set aside the hospital, which was already announced, but the schools, the premier committed to building 50 new schools and 70 modernizations. Um, this spring, we announced three schools for this region. You know, we announced 30 schools, three in this region, and we expect to have some more announcements later this fall. Um, you know, with our growth, and especially in this city, it's growing. You know, Alberta's growing, but I think Grand Prairie's leading the way, and, and uh, so schools are always under pressure, so we've had a high demand for modulars. We uh, Move 17 modulars into the city this fall, so just to try and get us through till the new schools are built. Um, I think, you know, we've had some changes in our health system, some restructuring earlier this spring. Um, the board was removed, and uh, then just lately now, uh, the minister announced with uh, Janet Davidson the restructuring and, and taking it from. 80 VPs or seniors down to 10, so we're restructuring and trying to get as much much of our concentration and our resources to the front line as possible and cut back on the upper management. Uh, Grand Prairie Hospital is going quite well. I toured there this morning, and I know you can't see much from the road now, but there's a lot of work going on. There's two stories underground that you can't see. There's a pile of concrete and steel down there already, and uh, pretty soon now we'll see the, you'll start to see the first floor coming out of the ground. We'll have, you know, this spring, that first section will have four floors above the ground by spring, so it'll start to take shape here pretty soon over the winter. Um, I was really happy just you know, a week or two ago, I guess, we received uh, approval from the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission for permission for the radiation vaults there for the cancer thing. Uh, you know, we assumed all along we would get it, but it's nice to have that approval in hand. And so they're started on the cancer vaults now, and they'll be a major part of the new hospital. So things are going quite well there. Um, on, they tell me on schedule and on budget, but we'll see there's a long ways to go before it's done. Um, and maybe I just would uh, 
I've been pretty impressed the last while driving around the city. Some of the new paving you've got done, you know, maybe we're not going to get caught like we did last winter. It looks like you're going to be more prepared. There's a lot of new paving contracts just finished in the last while and makes the streets a lot better. I'm sure there's always lots more to do. I know how that goes, but uh, just wanted to pass on a good job. Well done. Things are, things are looking good. And with that, I'll maybe open it for questions. Thanks very much, Minister Drysdale. Uh, questions for Minister Drysdale? Questions, comments? Councillor Rice. Date in the next year, uh, discussions on new funding formula for the MSI uh, will be going forward? Uh, well, that's an ongoing discussion. I mean, every budget we deal with that, and, and uh, you know, the plan was to increase that as we go forward, and of course, as I said, we have a budget to manage and stay within our means, but that's hopeful, the plan to keep slowly increasing that MSI budget. Uh, we did have our first uh, meeting with the federal minister on the Building Canada Fund. I was, you know, I don't have a whole lot to report yet. They've uh, come out with their, you know, we had a really brief meeting in their discussion and it just was presented to us. And so I think he plans on talking with municipalities and FCM, and it's just the start of it and don't really have any answers yet, but I'm glad to see that process moving along. Okay. Uh, I do see a few people in the queue for you. Councillor Gustafson. Thanks, Mayor Given. Can, Wayne, can you tell us, um, is there anything on the, on the books for the future of Highway 43 North bypass around the, the continuation of the bypass around the northwest corridor of the city? Um, well, it was on the three-year capital plan. I mean, our financial situation has, has kept it at the back end of that. But, uh, you know, I, I was expecting till we finish the twinning through the Sturgeon Lake area there, I think that'll be the next project after that. And, and uh, the first section, the pavement is finished now. They're just waiting for the contractor to paint the lines. I was hoping it would have been open yesterday when I come home. But So that'll be done any day now and once the lines are painted we'll use that first section and the second or the last piece there the contractor's done really well on the grade this year he hoped to get the grade done this year and I think he's going to do it and then he'll have he has to have it paved by this time next year so it looks like it's on schedule to be totally finished by this time next year and then I hope the next project will be the 43x bypass I know they've uh, pretty well bought all the land and, and completed the negotiations on that part, so it's just about ready to go. Thanks, Wayne. Uh, Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Given. I just want to say thank you, Wayne, for coming every year in this, uh, my first term. You've been here every year to speak to Council, and uh, I think that's very, speaks very highly of you. You're a very good MLA and a very good uh, uh, MLA for Wapiti constituency. Uh, just the question that uh, Councillor Gustafson brought up was 43X, the, the overpass. Like it's been, I don't know, a decade. It's been built for quite a while, and it's a big contention up north in this area, the peace country, to get that built and done yeah. and get the route around. So I really hope it's on the radar and not a five, ten more year radar because a lot of people come back and forth and say, well, Edmonton and Calgary are getting off, and this the overpass has been built for a lot of years. So that's a big one. Councillor Crokin. Thanks, Mayor Given. Yeah, thank you, uh, Wayne. Again, that, that I was part of that 43X also, but I, <clears throat> I have my m morning meetings at NW, and I continually get uh, attacked on the 116th Avenue and Highway 43. The corner there is about 42,000 vehicles go on that, and uh, it's there. There's some trenches in there that I know it's not your personal responsibility, but. Just kind of wanted to highlight that uh, the traffic that is going through, and I see some two, three million dollar trucks from Halliburton and uh, Trican and whatever their instrument trucks. And they hit those. Uh, I was beside one the other day with my 98 year old mother. She thought they might be coming in, and I said, "No, I can, I can avert that myself." So, just to kind of put that on the uh, maybe a little on the radar screen. And another thank you for the uh, for the lights that we're going to be getting at the uh, airport. Uh, this is a regional airport. Uh, we serve all the communities in Alberta and BC, and it's a very high traffic corner, 
and thank goodness there's been no accidents and with the lights there will of course be uh, hopefully never an accident there so thank you again for the widening of the road and and the lights there thanks very much councillor Coken. any other uh, questions comments for Molly Drysdale councillor Radburn thank you McGovern um Wayne, thanks again for coming this evening. Uh, pleased to chat with you. Um, do you have a Municipal Government Act uh, review update for us? Tell us, uh, people might be interested in those watching, uh, kind of what the process looks like and where you're at with it. Well, I'm, I'm not directly involved in that, and so probably uh, your mayor and some others know about as much as I do because, you know, they're in the consultation process right now with, with well, and, and uh, Councillor Rice probably knows they've been consulting with AUMA and AMD and C, and it's a big act, and it's going to be, uh, you know, a couple of years probably before it's finished. And so, to say where it's at, it's well underway, and there's discussions going on, and and uh, you know, I guess you have your opportunity for input as a council and through through uh, Councillor. Right, so I think your voice will be well heard there, and, and I'll support you. But uh, yeah, it's a big act, lots of work, and it's well underway for sure. Well, there's a potential to uh, change the landscape of uh, how we do things in Alberta, and so uh, I'm pleased to see that everybody's engaged. I know we have been, yeah. and our mayor has been, and Helen has been. So uh, yeah, we're looking forward to the outcomes. Yeah, thank you. It's important. Yeah. I see, Councillor O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. Wayne, thank you very much for coming to council tonight. I just want to uh, thank you again for the support in the traffic lights at the airport. There's a number of us that are on the airport commission. The city has approached the government uh, over the last three years for sure and as the airport itself. And I'll be looking forward to having to stop at a red light. Right. Yeah, I believe the tender is awarded now, so it's up to the contractor. Hopefully you can get some work done this fall there, yeah. <coughs> um, I don't see anybody else in the queue. Uh, Wayne, if I could, uh, just a uh, quick thank you for your support in this region's lobbying for schools. Uh, we've mentioned, obviously, the, the uh, hospital and the uh, lights at the airport, but uh, recognize also that you're a voice and an advocate for the need for schools in the city of Grand Prairie. Certainly appreciate that. And we're uh, hopeful about future news uh, as the, the summer wears, or the uh, fall wears on. Um, you mentioned Build Canada. Uh, council, you'll receive formal communication from the city. Uh, but council had made a motion at our recent meeting uh, to forward the city of Grand Prairie's position on to you uh, so that when you discuss with your federal colleagues that you'd have that. And the city's uh, position is that we'd like to look for a per capita allocation um, and um, an allocation basis rather than a competitive basis. Um, Build Canada previously was one pot of money everybody put in their applications and maybe you win, maybe you lose. Um, and uh, the city's position is that uh, we'd like to see something that's more predictable and more sustainable and, and uh, that we could budget for. And so you'll see formal communication on that. But just while we have you here, I, there's no better way to deliver that message than face-to-face. -face. Um, certainly appreciate the opportunity to do that. The other one was uh, the Young Offender Centre. Uh, you have uh, received a request from us, and I don't know if your department has had a chance to review that request uh, for uh, disposal of the Young Offender Centre, and, and I don't know if you're in a position to state uh, where that request is at. Yeah, I just got to be careful. We we did deal with that at the Treasury Board. I took it forward, but um, I guess obviously you haven't got the letter yet, so I'll be careful. But uh, um, I think I can officially say it that we approved the the transfer for a dollar, and you should be getting a letter saying that. But maybe don't put that in the media, or I'll have my Treasury Board after. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I'm sure. I'm sure the media just heard that, and I'm sure they won't say anything. That's no, they're well known for. Nobody will tell them about yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they did split it because it is a large lot. So, uh, you know, to to uh, to give you the facility for a dollar, some of my uh, colleagues thought we could subdivide the lot and sell the bare lot, and then give you the sender and the land for a dollar. But we can have some discussions about that. And so, there's that's fantastic news. Thank you very much for your support in that. It's great.
right here. Hopefully, I don't um, get into we'll, we'll trouble for that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I don't know if anybody else had anything else for Minister Drysdale. Uh, William, I think it was said before, but I certainly want to uh, add my thanks. Uh, in my time on council, I don't believe I remember another MLA uh, coming on an annual basis to city council to report on the activities and to take questions like this. So thank you very much for doing that, and thanks for your commitment to our community. We, it's certainly noticed and appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we had uh, one other delegation uh, on our printed agenda, and we will make time, make sure that uh, everybody that wanted to speak has an opportunity, but we had one other uh, that is in our printed delegation, and uh, Mr. Lacusta, Al, if you could join us at the presenter's table. Um, it's not often where council requests a delegation, uh, but uh, given that it, the term is ending, please just have a seat, uh, Al. Um, uh, we thought it would be appropriate. Um, the City of Grand Prairie has been a longtime supporter of the Pipestone Creek uh, Dinosaur Museum project and now the Philip J. Curry Dinosaur Museum. And uh, previous councils and this council have made financial commitments to that project because we recognize that it's going to be a, a fantastic resource for our entire region and certainly a fantastic resource for the future of our community. Um, but we all also know that uh, the dinosaur bears your name, uh, being the person who discovered it um, way back when. We won't sort of speak to dates, but some time ago. Um, and at the sod turning, um, uh, the official sod turning for the museum earlier this summer, um, the city of Grand Prairie received a shovel, an official shovel as a funder for the $3 million towards the project. And council discussed and thought it was highly appropriate that the person that would have that shovel would be you given your involvement in the project. And so we wanted to invite you here today so that we could present you officially with the City of Grand Prairie's uh, official groundbreaking shovel. Uh, we hope that you would keep it as a memento of uh, museum and your involvement in the project. So thank you so much. And if you'd like to come up, and I don't know if Doreen would like to come up, and uh, we can share uh, share this and, and pass it on. <laughs> uh, Al, do you want to say a few words before we have you come up? Uh, yes, <clears throat> this is uh, quite an honor <clears throat> to receive that. Um, I do take responsibility for finding <laughs> the bone bed. <clears throat> um, as you all know, the Philip J. Curry Dinosaur Museum is being constructed as we speak, and uh, it will house, uh, amongst other things, a, a number of new dinosaur species that were discovered in the area. And uh, it is that that I believe will be responsible for quite an increase of uh, tourism in Grand Prairie and everything associated with it. Grand Prairie is a dynamic city, and this will make it even more so. And it's a great city. I came here in 1969, intending to stay here for two years, and here we are. The two-year plan, like everybody else. <laughs> well, Al, thank you so much. We're so glad that you did come to Grand Prairie. We're glad that you stayed more than two years. And uh, it's certainly an honor to be able to present you with this, uh, well, I suppose technically it's a $3 million shovel. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll come thank around you. and I'll present that to you. Thanks very much, Mr. Lacusta, obviously for your involvement in the project and uh, the discovery of the bone bed, uh, and thanks for making your way here tonight uh, for that little little gift and presentation. Thank you. Uh, so this is still the delegation portion of our agenda. Uh, every city council meeting has a delegation portion, and it's an opportunity for anybody in the community to come forward and speak, speak on any community-related matter. Um, I am aware that there may be some delegations related to the Derek Taylor School, and so I uh, certainly want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to speak uh, if they wish. Um, but would ask delegations, uh, if you have a relatively similar comment to somebody else, uh, maybe if there's somebody that can speak on behalf of a group, uh, or if you'd just like to highlight that you agree with what the previous speaker said, that would probably make it easier on everybody. But certainly want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to speak if they, if they choose. Uh, if you could just uh, try to limit your comments as best as possible. So um, I will uh, open the floor. If somebody would like to raise their hand and come forward, then uh, you're more than welcome to come, come forward and speak, please. So when you come up... Just identify yourself uh, for the uh, recording secretary and uh, ensure that uh, um, who you are, if, uh, at what point of view you're representing, your concern, and uh, and we'll we'll move from there. Thank you. Welcome. Good evening. My name is Noel Roberts, and I'm a resident of uh, Mission Heights. Mike Welch, uh, re 
President as well. Uh, Mayor Given and Council, and uh, Minister Drysdale, if you're still here. <laughs> uh, thanks very much for the opportunity to uh, to speak to you this evening regarding the Derek Teeter parking lot uh, issue that uh, I just became aware of uh, recently. Um, as I mentioned, um, I'm a long-time resident of uh, Grand Prairie, not quite up to uh, you, Mr. Lacustas, but uh, my two-year plan has got me here in 17 years, so we're well on our way there. Uh, my kids actually attend uh, Derek Taylor School as well. Uh, just recently, I became aware of a proposed parking lot on the north end of the school uh, and associated access road to it. Um, I guess from my perspective, I'm concerned about uh, the proposed parking area on, on two fronts. Um, there's been a, a perceived lack of communication, I believe, from the school board in terms of describing what the plans will be in that area. And uh, from that stems my concern regarding the increased traffic flow uh, within the subdivision as a result of where this uh, parking lot is likely to be situated. Um, fr from my perspective, uh, what I would like to do is, is respectfully ask the council to provide some flexibility to the permit that's already been granted to the school board uh, to allow for um, two things to occur. Um, just in terms of, of looking at uh, the, the current location of where that permit is, or where the parking lot will actually be located, uh, and also to provide um, some flexibility um, to allow the modular units that uh, Minister Drysdale already had alluded to to be opened without having the parking lot in place. I think, uh, I think what would that, that would do is it would achieve um, two outcomes, at least for, for me personally. Number one, it would, it would allow the students of Derek Taylor to actually move into their classrooms, into the modulars from the, uh, from the gymnasium that they're currently in, uh, which is uh, certainly from a parent's standpoint a, uh, a move in the right direction. And number two, provide enough time for the school board to adequately assess all options uh, regarding locating that parking lot. I know there are probably some um, potential areas that could be utilized with respect to the existing parking lot on the south side of the school that uh, that I, I believe should be looked into uh, with, with greater scrutiny. So from my perspective, that would be the two asks I would have of, of council on that matter. Okay. Thanks very much. Um, Mr. Foster, did you... Yeah, I just uh, I'd like to say um, the, the, the wife and a few, few other members around the, uh, around the street, they, 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 they told uh, the residents in the you can get about 60, 60 signatures, um, all basically uh, opposing the placement of the uh, uh, parking lot. I guess I'm not quite as graceful, but I, I guess I, I like to say, uh, point out the, the lack of communication plan. I know the city manager mentioned there's communication plan there, and uh, I'm picking up on the city investigation didn't happen last night. So it, it would be nice to, to have the people affected The decision maker. Um, there is potential for safety concerns, like like, like Mayor mentioned, with increased traffic. There's lots of local children playing on the road, and also um, I don't know if using the same information from COVID from some of the visit locations from some of the projects there. I, I'm not sure which way um, these two are, but I think that's related. But it'd be nice to hear your side. Okay. Um. So I did, uh, I do see some folks in the queue for questions. Uh, I believe we received a note that um, Mr. Lerners from the Grand Prairie Public School Board would uh, speak to this issue as well. And so uh, we certainly will give him an opportunity. I think this is the first that we've heard about it at the council table. Uh, we were made aware that uh, there would be a delegation coming, but uh, so this is the first that council is really hearing about it at this level. Um, and I think it's important to recognize that ultimately the public school board is the developer of the property. Uh, and they certainly do that in accordance with the city's land use bylaw and, and requirements. Um, but uh, the, the, it is the school board that is the developer. So I do see, though, some questions uh, from council uh, for you. So, Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mary Ewan. Thank you, uh, Noel Mike, for coming out. Just um, two questions. How old is Derek Taylor School? Six years or seven? Seven. Seven. Five, six years? I, I'm just wondering, is the modular unit bigger than the school there now? I went to an open house there, and I, I was just surprised just how big it is there. 
I mean, it's just amazing what's been going on around here and uh, our youth. So uh, I know it's off the question, but they're looking at another route because of modulars and the school isn't very old. And I think the modulars are almost as big as the school. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't know the, the actual number of students that would be in the modulars versus the actual school itself, but uh, um, I, there, there is a number of modulars that are there. Uh, in terms of the, uh, the parking lot requirements, ask is for somewhere in the order, I believe, uh, of about 16 parking stalls, thereabouts. And there, uh, again, when you look at the, the footprint of the school in relation to where the existing infrastructure and parking lots are, there's probably some additional options that could be investigated by the city council. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. I don't see anybody else in the queue with uh, questions for the delegation. So, gentlemen, thanks very much for the presentation. Um, I think there may be others that want to speak to the issue. Um, and then ultimately council uh, deals with uh, delegation business at the end of our agenda. Um, so we'll go through and listen to anybody that wants to speak on this issue, and then we continue on through the rest of our agenda. And if there was a motion or direction coming out of uh, your presentation today, it would be towards the end of our agenda. So um, you can either stick around and enjoy the entire exciting meeting, um, or you can watch online at home, uh, see it archived, or administration could contact you with some follow-up. So. Uh, I'll leave that to you, but I, as I said, I understand that Mr. Learners is here and, and may have some information from the school board. So, okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Learners, I see you there. If you'd uh, care to join us and, and sure. share some information from the school board perspective. Well, I, I can't make you feel bad, Mayor Gibbon, because um, as of until about a day or so ago, I, I too was, was unaware of the of the situation. Um, some of these permits get issued during the summer, especially with the portables, because the way things last a little longer, and and in the summertime, the school boards are a little bit like Sleepy Hollow, so they try not to do too much. So, anyway, um, here and there, uh, it has been an active uh, day or so, and we've um, been on the uh, blower with the with the city and with the folks here in the neighborhood trying to figure out some kind of solution and, and I think the solution that Noel is was proposing is is consistent with what we're what we're trying to do there um, we, we can't guarantee that we're going to find a better spot there's some initial indications are that we can fit something in and uh, we think we we can get it um, either way it's my understanding that the what we are planning to construct is uh, is temporary um, but temporary tends to lead towards permanent, so we're trying to avoid kind of creating a situation like that. So um, I, I think if, um, you know, um, I think the first condition that they're asking for is, is already being dealt with, because I think the students are moving in tomorrow and the parking lot's not finished. So either someone's uh, allowing that to happen or a blind eye, one or the other. Either way, we appreciate that. As for the second one, we're... Um, we're um, prepared to move forward. I know infrastructure in this case, um, as usual, doing an absolutely wonderful job uh, is, is going to fund as part of the modulars um, uh, summer, most of that parking lot. So we're pretty excited and I'm, I'm able to find a little more time because uh, Wayne Drysdale cleared up my schedule um, for the last, uh, for the next uh, three, four years. So I've got lots of time now to concentrate on school board trust. Again, thank you very much for that, Wayne. I really appreciate that. That was excellent. So anyway, um, yeah, I'm, I'm fully supportive of what uh, Noel and the, and the folks there are trying to do, and um, uh, open to any questions that people may have. Okay. Uh, any questions for Mr. Drysdale? Uh, a few came into the queue. Councillor Cropen. Actually, not for Mr. Drysdale. Sorry, Ms. Learners. Wayne just got so much airtime in that presentation. Yeah. That was him. <laughs> Thanks a lot for uh, for coming, John. Uh, has there been any kind of exploration of uh, maybe a site where people could drive to either on the, uh, the Knowledge Centre? Uh, I know the, uh, the East Link isn't used. Like there, there's probably lots of parking there for the you know nine to, to three period. Is there any any idea or any talk about having a shuttle? I know it, it, everybody comes from different areas and they each need a vehicle to drive, but I'm just thinking of a try and relieve some of that pressure if everybody could stop somewhere at eight o'clock and take a bus over. Yeah, um, well, we're, we're, we're kind of lucky in, the, in that sense. I think we're going to be short about 10 or 12 stalls once the new Isabella, Cam Isabella Campbell School gets opened up and all those that big plethora of, of, of modulars 
kind of dissipates into, well, it'll probably move to another spot in Grand Prairie. But it, um, so uh, I think we're only looking for about 10 or 12 spots there. We're kind of really lucky that the K to nine kids for on most part can't drive. And so they got a few parents dropping them yeah, off. But uh, if, we, if they can drive, we have a problem in the education system that we need to deal with. Uh, but uh, for the most part, I think we're we're pretty good that way. I think if we can get another 15 or 20 stalls kind of around the existing peripheral parking, I think we'll be good. And I think that's been a long-term problem in the area as the people have, since the beginning of that um, that subdivision. Um, it's always been a bit of a, a tough thing to deal with. And, and Christine Donnelly was very quick to point out this afternoon that that John Laners, you designed that subdivision 15 years ago, so this is this is your problem. So I, I am I'm duty bound to fix it, and so I will do what I can. Thank you. Uh, as as a city councilor, of course, safety is of utmost importance, yeah. and uh, we got little darlings running in there to do their work, and they don't really care where the cars are. So yeah, absolutely, due diligence on it for us. Thanks, John. We'll see yeah. Councilor Rice. John, just, just to make sure we're on the same page. Okay, there were two requests. You said you agree with both of them. Right. One is to move the kids into the portables tomorrow. Correct. And the second is? The second is that right now, well, in my world with development permits, and I, I haven't actually seen the development permit, but typically they identify where the parking's going to be. And they're fairly, you know, when, when it gets down that path, it, they kind of decide this is where it has to be and this is, you know, you kind of meet that clause, right? And what I'm just saying is let's just take a deep breath here and and, and we're not saying we don't want the parking, um, but we just want to have some flexibility to figure out where the best spot is. Because right now it's everything, the portables, everything's been so rushed. And I think that's, it was everybody just said, well, that's the quickest solution and that's the easiest solution. And I don't think that's necessarily the, the best solution. Not guaranteeing that it will be, but we're, you know, hopefully that we can move it, but it will allow us a little bit of time to talk to the neighbors and the folks and see what makes sense. And for the school a little bit more, what makes more sense. And so, um, yeah, I just, I just don't want the, 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 the development permit to kind of take precedence over what's common sense for that area. So. So you're not going to proceed with the parking lot at this time? Uh, well, if, if you know, if we could come up with a solution in the next uh, week, we have an idea, and if principals and parents and a few other odds and ends can all make sense of it, and we can grab the grab the attention of the Wapitis or the Canelsons or whoever, and 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 get them out there, we we may very well have some parking this year. I'm hoping we will. I'm I'm confident or thinking that we can, but. Uh, uh, so what Nature if it was on the south side, as they mentioned? Yeah, you still have to do something there. So that's, you know, that's what I'm saying. I don't know if we can get that done this fall or not, but hopefully, hopefully we can. I'll just have to bug uh, Dan over at, at Barstow Landers Ketchum Engineering and make sure that they, you know, a good job and get that done. <clears throat> and, and John, I, I guess one of the things I heard is the lack of communication. And you're saying that that's because it was summer, but you're, you're, it's the intent of the school board to plug that hole. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I think so. Yeah, no, not I think so. We will do it. I think we're meeting that right now. Um, we move it to the parking lot situation. I'm not sure if if that'll be if that'll rile the neighbors up. I'm I'm thinking that for a long time the neighbors have said we need more parking there. Get off my streets, please, kindly. And so this will this will do that as well too. If we can make something work over there, and there's a bit of room there. But, you know, everybody has an interest, so we'll have to figure that out, too. One more, if I can. I guess I heard the service road was a concern. The service road. Um, Did I not hear that? I'm not sure. They are internal subdivision roads, so I don't know if the, if there's service roads per se. I, maybe I misunderstood what maybe that was the issue. But there are some. there's an internal subdivision road that that's where they're coming off of. That's the plan of this, this permit. And I'm not, um, I, and I think the, the thinking is there that it's not really designed for, it's more for local traffic, not not a whole bunch of excess traffic. So maybe I think that's what Noel was referring to. I, I could be wrong though. Okay, thank you. I see Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Given. John, just a quick question. Uh, I'm glad you're looking at uh, Noel, Mike, and the parents of, because I, I believe they're correct. I was just at that school the other day. Um, how old is the school? That one first question. Ask me that question. I'm going to go six years, seven years, ten, ten. ten. 
Okay. So 2006 and seven. Okay. Lauren so would know. Six, seven years. <laughs> and okay, so. Seven years old. There seven years old. So school's pretty, pretty new. You bet. And what percentage of, of the modulars taking up that school area right now? In, in terms of. Uh, for, for children. Well, I would say we have probably uh, 40 to 50 percent of our kids in modulars. Um, okay, I, I appreciate you answering that because we're the youngest city in Canada, and uh, I've said it before, and we've all know about children under five, more than over 65, so really hoping in the future some more different planning goals to building schools for actually for growth, because you always hear excuses, and it's been excuses for many years. And that, that place there is how it's gone, I don't know. Uh, maybe you're planning the modulars will get less or they're going to get more with the new school in Pinnacle, but something, something's gone wrong there. Yeah, it is, uh, it is tough. And we, um, it's just a high growth area. And, you know, I think when it was built, I don't think the expectation that Pinnacle and all those other areas would take off like they did. But it is, it's like schools are a little like accordions. And, um, you know, they get built to a certain stage and then they have to have all these, these modulars and then, then you get another school, and it just it has to do with utilization factors and, and the benevolence of the Minister of Infrastructure and those folks out there, depending on when they when they can fit all that in. So it is it is tough. If I had if I said our biggest issue that we have by far without question is infrastructure, and and it's unfortunate right now infrastructure is driving our education decisions, and that is a that is a real problem for us. And I know they, the governments have a hard time funding all that stuff, and and there's pressure points. But, uh, and so they, you know, everybody has their world to deal with. And, uh, but in our world is infrastructure. And when you, when you at councils here advocating for, for schools, uh, that's just music to my ears. Cause really that is a, that's a huge, you know, we, I always tell people we have uh, about, just in our public system, forgetting about our sister, but are we get about 400 kids, you know, last year in, in our, in our schools, city of Edmonton got about a thousand <laughs> new kids in there. And they're, they're 20 times bigger than us you know and so then they have some empty schools in the middle and they can they can play and bus and do all the things that you're talking about we don't have that luxury every school we have you know our kids are with their cheeks up to the glass you know and um and so we're we're trying to do the best we can kids are still kids and they make do and they probably don't even know any better but we know better and so we need to do better and uh we'll continue to knock on uh wayne's door and he's been very good with us and and um and so we'll we'll keep on we'll keep on pushing, but that is our biggest issue. I can't agree with you more. Thank you, John. I see Councillor Wong. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. So, John, um, I just want to make sure I heard correctly that that the, the school boards are consulting with all the residents to make sure that you can work out a solution with with that, that takes into account the needs of the school as well as all the surrounding residents. Yeah, it might be a little premature to say that we're talking to all the residents. I think we've got this contingent and, and, and how we communicate with that. And we'll have to figure out, you know, we'll do a tummy test and figure out what, what everybody feels is, is, you know, unnecessary to make this go with, while still being a little bit expedient. Like, I still want to get parking in there. I still want to get the schools open. Um, but, you know, if they can figure out a way of, you know, communicating and, and if there's a couple other people that may get affected, Maybe we've got to knock on a few doors and have a couple coffees um, to see if we can do that. But, um, you know, if we move that from there, I think from that side, I think most of these people are, uh, are satisfied, I, I think. I don't know if there's anybody here coming to support that temporary parking today. But um, if there are, then they can put their hand. But uh, generally speaking, so there's a few people maybe around the peripheral of the new parking lot, the old parking lot, rather, that may have concerns. And we just, you know, maybe we have to talk with them. But... Um, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question, but it's... It sounds like you're making an effort. Yeah. That's good. Okay. I don't see anybody else in the queue uh, with questions for you. So, uh, John, thanks very much for the clarity about what the school board is doing and the fact that the students are going to be moving into the portables without the parking lot being installed. That's Correct. that's one major issue. Okay. Thank thanks very much, John, for being here. Oh, Councillor Rice uh, sure. wanted the last word. Christine, like... So I guess I've heard John saying, hold up on this permit. Don't like allow some flexibility in this permit. And I guess, if, are we doing that? Like, is that? I'm going to direct that to administration. Okay. 
So the development permit has been issued, and I think what we're talking about is working with the public school board to amend that permit. And I think that we're city administration is more than happy to sit down and look at the different options and see if we can work up some solution that uh, that is more acceptable to the neighborhood. And that doesn't delay them unduly. Correct. Okay. So next week would, or this later this week. <laughs> okay. yep. Yeah, since it's Monday later this week, we'd probably be. Thanks very much, Ms. Donnelly. Thanks very much, John. Uh, so uh, so we've managed to hear from the school board. I think that was helpful. Is there anybody else who would like to come forward to speak on this issue? Uh, please, as we did with everybody else, come down, just introduce yourself so we uh, know who you are and, and uh, you can speak to council. Uh, my name is Darlene Madosh, and I'm a concerned parent that lives on the proposed loop, no exit loop, that this parking lot is supposed to go on the end of. Um, this amendment or whatever to this permit, I think that's a great idea. I would like to see this parking lot held off until such time as the residents on this no exit loop can be heard. I mean, we only found out about this a week, this last week. Um, my, t my own two children go to Derek Taylor School. I realize it's a busy school. I realize there are tons of kids there. It's the same at every school here in Grand Prairie. Um, being that we live on this no exit loop, there is one entrance and one exit into it. They need to build a, an access road off of the end of our crescent in order to get into this parking lot. Most of us that have bought houses in this crescent bought them there because it is a low traffic area. It's a nice, safe crescent. Yes, it's beside the schools. It was never in the plans when we originally bought these properties here that there would be a parking lot at the end of it and that this traffic would be increased. Now, I have nothing against a parking lot going in. I have everything against not being notified of one going, or trying to put one in at the end of our crescent. This rushing it and wanting to put a temporary one in a week doesn't exactly appease me either. Um, I think that's pushing it a little fast for us residents that live there to have a choice or a voice in changing it. Um, in our crescent alone, we have about 30 children that live in that crescent alone, that walk to either Kateri or Derek Taylor School off the end of our crescent. Now, the other day I sat and watched, had the luxury of watching, how many kids actually walk into our crescent down that street and to either school with the safety of the fact that it is a no exit loop with low traffic. There's 50 of them, just that I counted one morning alone, that walk through that school, through, that, through our street, from all surrounding areas, even to walk to St. Joe's that go through there. Um, to me, it's a safety issue. And as it is, we already have parents that sneak into our loop and park on the end to drop kids off in the morning, pick kids up in the afternoon or drop them off in the afternoon for kindergarten and pick them up at the end of the day. Now, all of a sudden, when we're trying to back out of our driveway in the morning, we've got an extra 16 vehicles. We already have the 10 or so of the parents that drop their kids off now that we tolerate. We've asked for lower speed signs in our loop. We've asked for speed bumps in our loop. Have we gotten anything back on that? No. So we have to deal with the problems. You guys don't. You deal with the issue. You put it in, and we deal with the problem. Now, do our property taxes go down because of the traffic that goes in here? Our street might get snow removal more often. But you know what? I'd rather do without the parking lot and handle the snow than the traffic. For my kids' safety, for, my, for the surrounding kids' safety, for the pet safety alone. Another issue I have, and I'm hoping I'm speaking for a lot of the residents that are here behind me, um, is who's going to monitor this parking lot? Is it open for public? Is it open for just teachers? Is there going to be proper signage? Is there going to be proper monitoring of this parking lot to make sure that it is still a safe environment if this goes in? So as you can see, there is lots of concerns, lots of issues, and we're realistically very upset 
at finding out a week about this, and there's gravel already in there. Like, I'm sorry, what the heck just happened? <laughs> you know, it's, I think it's very unfair how this came about. I know Grand Prairie is a great city to live in. I've been here for almost 12 years now. It's grown dramatically. I like the stuff that's going on in it. I like the buildings and I like the sportsplex and the multiplex and the schools and the, the way it's growing. I just think that the, and as the city council, I mean, it's your guys' job to watch out for the residents' interests as well as the city's growth. And the communication on this was atrocious. So I think that's all I have to say. <laughs> Thanks very much. I think of anything else right now. Thanks very much for the presentation. As I said at the outset, I just want to clarify that the city of Grand Prairie isn't developing a parking lot. It's actually the public school board that's developing a parking lot, and so. Um, but the city and this issued is, the and permit. This is, and this is the first that this permit, uh, because it is within the land use bylaw, so it was is an allowed development. Uh, so this is the first that your city council is hearing about this, and so uh, we appreciate the fact that you had the opportunity to come tonight, and we'll get a chance to deal with it tonight. I hope so. Thank you very much for coming. Um, I don't, oh, I see Councilor McLean, you had a question? Uh, thank you, Mayor Gibbon, I do have a question. Darlene, uh, when was this asked for uh, a lower speed limit? Because I haven't gone all the way down that road, I've just gone into the school and out. Uh, did, when was the ask made and is it 50 so far past and you, your community would like it to be 30 or 40? Or? I phoned myself mm -hmm. last year. Actually, I, I have phoned a few times with my concerns especially when I first moved here and my children were smaller on that street and they used to have football practice at the end and all of the football kids would come flying out of there after practice. I said, can we not get a, a, can we not get a speed sign on this street saying, you know, children at play, because it's an open park at that end, or at least it is right now, um, that there should be, should have been some form of sign. We are right beside the two schools, even though we're on that no exit <coughs> should there not be a speed limit sign there? And they said, oh, you can put one up. You can put one up on your yard hmm. that says, children at play, please slow down or whatever. Yeah, you know what? Even myself as the driver, if I see a personal sign put up there versus a, a, an authentic legal sign, what I'm going to think about that? I mean, yes, I'm going to take it into consideration, but am I going to abide by it? No. Just why I want to throw, I really like your idea about the speed slowing down in that area. And uh, maybe all the neighborhoods get together and have a petition and bring it forward. And uh, I think it would be a good step forward. Mm -hmm. I don't see anybody else in the, in the queue for you, Ms. Madosh. Thanks very much for coming tonight and presenting. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Is there anybody else who would like to come forward and present to council on this issue? Anybody else that had a perspective that they wanted to share? Because if... Okay, you weren't getting up. Okay, come on down. Come on down, and same as uh, previously, just introduce yourself so that we've got your name. Uh, my name is John Dory. I live over there in that little loop over there. I agreed pretty much with everything she had to say, but I'd just like to emphasize the fact that what concerns me is the traffic and the children there, because there's all kinds of children over there playing in the playground. They're coming in and out of there. And we do have a, a, a playground sign there, 30 kilometers an hour, but... It rarely gets it here too, like uh, just there's always traffic coming through there. I think if you put a parking lot in there, people will come in, they're going to see the parking lots full or whatever, that's extra traffic, you're going to find whatever place to park again, so then you're blocking our streets again. And uh, like the mums, they drop their kids off, pick them up in the afternoon, everybody knows it's a short-term deal, they're there for a few minutes and they're gone. Otherwise, that loop, you can hardly get around in that loop. Never mind trying to get out of your driveway. And nobody gave us any kind of notice. I don't know if they have to or they're supposed to, but we should have been informed that this was going on. I looked at my back door the other night and I just seen them starting to dump gravel beside my place. So that's the first I found out about it. And then some of the neighbors started to get together talking about this, what's going on, and this is where we're at now. Okay, that's it. Thanks very much for your presentation. I don't see anybody in the queue with a question or comments. So thanks. thanks very much for coming, making yourself available. Is there anybody else that would like to speak on this issue? Come forward. Welcome. Hi. 
My name is Riel Bat. I've been a resident uh, since about one year before the school was built. Um, just to add to the rest of the, uh, the residents' concerns, uh, we're not opposed to a parking lot. Uh, I guess our biggest concern is that uh, the lack of notification, uh, lack of consultation. Uh, I think any one of you, if, uh, if you had a road that was to be built uh, beside your place, uh, you would at least want to be consulted. Uh, I think that's the, the city's due diligence. Um, as a part with the, uh, with the development uh, uh, permit holder as well, uh, there's, it's not just the city's fault. Um, just to add also to uh, the parking lot, uh, I know I live just right straight across uh, from the parking lot. A lot of people talk about the parents that drop their, their children off, um, come back to pick them up. Uh, my big concern is with an unsupervised parking lot. Uh, just with it being on the back side of the school hidden, uh, there's no supervision. I know with, uh, it happened uh, to me last year, I was shoveling my driveway, middle of winter, very cold. Uh, I look across the street and I see a little girl and she's waiting there. I kind of wait, okay. Well, her mom must be running a little bit late. Uh, it was probably about a good half an hour um, prior to, I went out, came back, noticed she's still there, asked her, you know, is, is there... You know, can would you like to come in, use the phone, um, you know, just because of the lack of supervision. And I, I'm not sure what happened with the parent, but uh, just with that lack of supervision on a, on a parking lot or anything like that, I think it really has to be looked at uh, very seriously. Um, also, with, with the parking concern, um, uh, I know we can all sit and, and, and look and, and decide, you know, calculate numbers and figure out how much parking you need. Um, we look today. Uh, case in point, uh, went to the school, physically looked at what is required for parking. Uh, there was four stalls that were available. So I'm just concerned, is this actually needed? Um, I know they talk about a temporary, uh, 16 stalls being uh, required for temporary use. Um, there was four today. Whether or not that's like that the whole time, I don't, I don't know. But I think this just needs, ha needs to be looked at a little bit further. Um, we as residents are, are very concerned about the speed that uh, the way that this, this was being implemented and uh, I'd like to, uh, to thank Mayor and, and Council for, uh, for hearing our concerns. Thanks very much for coming forward and thanks for sharing it. I don't see, oh I do see actually, uh, Councillor Wong. There you go. Thank you Mayor Given. Maybe not so much a question but just a comment since we do have our Minister of Infrastructure and an MLA for the city. Uh, these are the type of issues we can see people are passionate about, but you know, we have a school here that was built for right around 400 students and now is handling almost double that because of all the modulars there, which means staff is pretty much doubled mm -hmm. at that location. And thankfully the province has, uh, has uh, budgeted to build another school on the south side of the city to relieve some of that pressure. So maybe we are looking at a temporary situation, but I'd like Wayne Drysdale over there just to hear that we do need more schools in the city. Otherwise, these kind of situations are going to continue to crop up as we add modulars there. So please take that message back to your college, colleagues at the ledge. And, and thank you for the support for the, for the new school, because that, that's really going to help these people. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Councillor Wong. I have a feeling that wasn't exactly a question for you. <laughs> is, there, is there anybody else that'd like to come forward and address council on this matter? I want to make sure that everybody that felt that all of the issues were, were covered and all the perspectives were covered. Uh, as I said, council will uh, will deal with this issue, this issue uh, towards the end of our agenda. And so you are more than welcome to stay. I don't think it's a particularly long agenda if you want to stay and see how it's dealt with. Um, but if there's anybody else that'd like to come forward and speak on this issue, by all means, we have the opportunity. I'll give, you a, I'll give you a chance to consider that, uh, and I uh, will say that this is still the delegation portion. It's where anybody can come forward to speak to any issue. I see some... Sure, come on forward. I'll be in that chair. Sure. Come on up. I am Glenn Watson. I'm one of the neighbours in that area. And again, I just found out about this last night, so uh, obviously there's some of the people in our neighbourhood have all got together and stuff like that. But um, again, it's just, you know, we, we already talked about the timing and uh, people are getting to know this, but... I mean, even when you come onto that 106 off the, uh, I think it's uh, Michael Street going down, there is a blind corner there, and I mean, we get more traffic. It's, it is a con you know, concern for people leaving that area. I mean, we just had a serious accident, you know, in Fatality in, in Edmonton, 
and then obviously we don't need that <coughs> in our area too. So just that it is, uh, you know, that corner, it is blind going in, turning into our street too. So, I mean, that is a effective uh, to have a look at. And um, snow removal, I mean, I mean, we probably had it maybe one or twice, twice this year. And, uh, you know, if we have all this traffic going through, I mean, do we get more snow removal, I guess? But, I mean, it's just that uh, it is a concern. A lot of, a lot of people are, you know, I bought, this, I bought our place seven years ago because it was a nice, quiet place to be into and not a whole lot of traffic. So, I mean, the one guy that's living where the lot is, I'm pretty sure he's here. I know he is, but I don't think I'd be a happy camper either. But, you know, I mean, Riel was just saying he lives right across the street and there is a concern about... <coughs> You know, just the whole thing, and I just wanted to say that. Like, thank you, guys. And I know it's a, an issue with the schooling. I mean, I, I've been in here. Grand Prairie's a nice city, and I mean, it's growing fast, right? And it's our, our kids are the number one thing. We have to make sure that the education is is huge. But I mean, we just gotta look at everybody's concerns or two. So, thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you for the presentation. Is there is there anybody else that'd like to speak on this issue? Sure. I'm forward. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. All right. My name is Sue Longson. I live on the block, of course. Um, my house backs onto the field. And so uh, the year that Derek Taylor, Taylor was built, I spent um, an hour on the phone with 911 as the kids had broken into Derek Taylor and were smashing the light fixtures against Kateri School and then broke into Kateri School. And so I was on the phone with the 911, get the police here, these guys, now these guys and the 911 operator would say to me, that sounds like it's right outside your window. And I said, it is right outside my window. But that parking lot becomes another place for kids to hang out that's not on a main um, street or loop, right? It's another dark place that they can hang out. They hang out behind Kateri School quite often. Um, for a while, uh, the RCMP knew my voice. You know, it's gotten better over the years. I don't know if those kids have moved somewhere else, but it is another place for them to just kind of hang out and do whatever they do when they're hanging out uh, as uh, youth. Um, and the other thing is, if there is an accident on our loop, how do we get out if it's a closed loop, right? If it's a one in, one out, and that's it. So I just wanted to kind of mention the safety issue there and the, and the vandalism, right? So sure. Thanks very much. Awesome. I don't see anybody else, in the, anybody in the queue to ask a question. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Is there anybody else that would like to present on this issue or any other issue? I see some ladies in yellow shirts that have a feeling that aren't here about parking lots. They're here about public spaces, but not about park, public parking. Okay. Uh, and so uh, I see somebody else there in the back that would like to come forward. Sure, come on up to the, come up to the front. Sure. <laughs> well, you're still welcome. You did. <laughs> My name is Danielle Hessler, and I'm a, um, a member of the South Peace Ball Association Playground Committee. And I'm Emma Pryor, also a member of the as well. So actually, um, the reason we are here today is because we recently um, found out that the Community Living Committee um, denied our request that we had brought forward to the Community Living Committee in August of this last year. So that request... Um, Basically, was I, we provided a proposal that in, uh, had a playground proposal down at the South Bear Creek Ball Diamonds to be placed on Diamond 1 and Diamond 3. There were two requests that we had. One was to endorse the playground and also provide 50% of the funding for that playground, which would equate to about $45,000. And the other was basically just to the su support the development of that playground. I understand that there was um, two issues that the Community Living Committee um, had raised, one being location. Um, natural surveillance absolutely is limited in that area between Diamonds 1 and Diamond 3. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but it is limited. However, those diamonds are being used seven days a week from, from beginning of May all the way until the beginning of October. What we requested to do, um, one for safety issues of the diamonds, or because the location of the playground with the diamonds being adjacent to it, um, would be to fence the playgrounds with have a netting over top to protect the children from foul balls or any other dangers that might come up. 
with the natural surveillance issues being there, we also suggested that we could have the playground um, being that that fence, sorry, being locked. So it only had access when there was natural surveillance available at the playground. That doesn't have to be, it can remain open. Um, it was just a suggestion to assist with those natural surveillance issues. Um, to my understanding, th there was then more safety issues brought up because of the fencing that would be put up around the playgrounds. I've been to other ball diamonds in other communities that have playgrounds at their ball diamonds. They are all um, fenced in, covered. There's never been any issues that I have seen with kids climbing them. Um, the fences. We've never seen any issues with kids climbing the fences at the um, backstops down there or, or anything else. Obviously, you can tell by just how I'm talking right now that I am very concerned. Um, even not so much that, that the funding was, um, I guess, denied going forward to you guys, but just the fact that, that we would... Um, not be able to build a playground down there. We do have have sponsorship towards that playground of $25,000. And in fact, we had a meeting to go today to talk about more fundraising options that we've canceled because we will not be discussing about future fundraising if we do not have the support from the city. Thanks very much, ladies, for the presentation. Uh, so there is a motion on our agenda tonight uh, that speaks to this and uh, appreciate the presentation. I don't know if any council members had any questions for the delegation. Um, Councillor Coburn. Thanks, Mayor Gibbon. Thank you for coming. Uh, I am the chairman of Community Living, mm -hmm. and uh, you can read the notes. I did vote for it. Um, I felt that your proposal was was bang on. There, there was a little bit of a budgetary. It has to go to budget again. Mm -hmm. But I've I've been to storm games, and those pucks come at 80, 90, whatever miles an hour, and they they have they're covered. And uh, I, I think that we, the way it was explained, I know we don't want any accidents. We don't want anybody to get in there. And you had just explained that they were going to be locked and only used when, when the parents are there with their children. You didn't want kids climbing up and, you know, hurting their fingers or falling down. But I, I was sure that the netting and it was a location you wanted. Uh, there was a location that was going to be... Uh, I can't remember the three or four, whatever, the other diamonds anyway. And that wasn't the request that you, you wanted. And I I felt that the request that you had was in order. And the uh, the fencing, I thought, was in order myself. Um, kids will be kids. Uh, I love them. I have grandkids too. But uh, I was only one vote. So uh, it, it is going to budget review, and it is on the budget, or it is on the council uh, agenda tonight so you can maybe stick around for Absolutely. a little bit more yes thank you and just for clarification council croak the motion that's coming forward is is that it um, doesn't speak to referring it to budget so that's an option the council has tonight if they wish to uh, to refer that item to budget but the motion that came forward from the committee was was uh, didn't speak to to it going to budget so uh, uh, mayor given you could I also ask could I ask maybe uh, Director of Community Living, uh, Director Roth, just to maybe address the ladies that are here, uh, how we, uh, how it was uh, how it came about. I think uh, Councillor Croak and the ladies are here to make their presentation about their concerns. And uh, when we get to the agenda, I okay, think sure. With us, then council members could ask questions of administration to, to explore that. But the ladies are here it, to present their position and, and their request to council. So if, uh, we look for questions for the, the delegation. I think Thank Councillor Monroe has a question. Uh, thanks, Mayor Given. Uh, with the construction of this playground, is it uh, your intent that it would be uh, constructed by a certified professional company, or is this something that uh, would be done by the organization, or your organization? It, it will all be done, actually, by um, Blue, Blue Imp, and uh, they've provided our plans that meet all of the city's um, requirements for a park. I, I do have that all laid out and that was all described in that proposal, which I would be happy to share with you guys again. I actually have it right here if anybody's wanting to look at it. Thanks. That's all I had for right now. Thank you. Councillor McLean. 
Thank you, Mayor Jim. Thank you for coming forward. Uh, I said our community living, and one of the biggest concerns was the boat to netting. So hopefully when it comes up, uh, or you speak to it now, we're very concerned about foul bells. I really do believe in lots of money, more money is going into South Bear Park because I believe there was 500,000 by this council to redo fields. There have been different things happening down there. So it's a positive step that's been going down there. And I am for the playground. I have two little girls. So, but we are concerned about the netting and, and how it's going to be done. So. Okay. I don't see... Um see anybody else in the queue ladies so thanks very much for the presentation thanks for coming to speak to this and uh, as, as i said uh, it is on the agenda for later on so you'll be able to hear that discussion and, and be able to come to that thank you yeah, thanks for being here i have to say this is probably one of the more exciting council meetings that we've had in the entire term i don't know why you all waited till the very last meeting to show up and, and give us the delegations uh but no this is this is the delegation portion of the agenda as i said and, and i want to make sure that everybody feels that they've they've uh, had the opportunity to speak if there's anybody else that wanted to come forward uh, otherwise i'll look to close the delegation portion of the agenda and we'll move on to actually uh, the business of our agenda so is there anybody else that felt that they wanted to come forward not seeing anybody anybody moving so i'm going to close the delegation portion of our agenda uh, we'd move on to public hearings we had none tonight uh, we had no items of unfinished business uh, item 8.1 the strategic priorities chart under reports mr city manager would you care to introduce that uh, strategic priorities chart for us there we go hey thank you uh mayor given the um one of the uh, earlier this evening, you heard me talking about the council strategic plan and the uh, business plan council had over the term. Uh, one of the ways council has implemented the business plan is by, by the use of a strategic priority chart. And what that does, every quarter the council meets, talks about the issues and items they have on their uh, strategic priorities chart and gets updates from staff on, on various items. So I'll be pleased to provide you with the final strategic priorities chart update for this council. So um, it's for the quarter uh, starting October, going to December 2013. Uh, the, there's three top council priorities, one being the annexation. And the, uh, the task there is to confirm when the full, full hearing date is. There was a preliminary hearing held uh, earlier in September. And uh, it's now in the, the court of the Municipal Government Board, and uh, they will be coming back to us with a full hearing date, I'm guessing likely in, in the new year. Uh, the next priority is the subdivision and development fiscal model. Uh, this was a, an item Council had uh, talked about earlier uh, in their business planning, in terms of how, when subdivisions and developments are put in place of Council, what would be the impact on the community, what would be the costs. So. Uh, there is an update coming forward to council. Uh, it's planned to come forward in November on that topic. Uh, the third priority was city land planning, and there will be in October a final report coming to council. I guess now it will be November because the next council meeting will be at the beginning of November, so we should about, probably have a change in date. Uh, the other thing council has on this priorities chart is advocacy priorities, and this is, and the minister Drysdale will be familiar with council uh, and their advocacy plans. Uh, council has four uh, advocacy priorities. Uh, and what council did with this particular quarter, uh, they, they've added the Build Canada Fund to the provincial funding inequities item. Uh, the second one was the Municipal Government Act Review, which was you heard earlier this evening. Uh, the third one is Highway 43X, construction and bypass upgrades. Uh, one thing that was added to that one for this particular quarter was the pedestrian overpass and what was happening with that topic. And the last one is education programs and capital priorities. Uh, and the final section of council's plan, it gets into the corporate strategies, and that would be the three that I mentioned earlier this evening, the community engagement and consultation, balancing excellence and value, and fiscal sustainability. And in and, and those particular items, um, there's been new milestones uh, suggested for a number of different uh, action steps. Uh, in terms of community engagement, the implementation strategy will be coming forth in December. Uh, citizen satisfaction survey that's been uh, now shared at a public meeting at the library uh, just a couple weeks ago and an action plan for that will be coming out in december uh, in terms of the leisure center project uh, the aquatics facilities needs assessment is being undertaken and i guess uh, the community development director will be presenting that in november i believe 
Uh, the, the next item is a senior's lodge location, and uh, the next item there is identifying site options, and that will be coming back to council in November. Uh, and the final one is the infill development strategy for the fiscal sustainability strategy, and there will be uh, options uh, discussion paper presented to council in December. Thanks, Mr. City Manager. Uh, any questions, comments, or discussion on the strategic priorities chart for the, the final one for this term? Uh, if there weren't, I would look for a motion as well. I see Councillor Rice. I just have a question for Greg. Okay. Councillor Rice. Um, I noticed the advocacy priorities. One of them is the Highway 43 construction and bypass, also a pedestrian overpass. Recently, I was in Edmonton, and they seem to have a similar situation. Uh, so what they've done is... On, on an area where we have kids running across the highway, they've they've just installed a section of chain link fence in the in the median, forcing them to go up to the corner, and it seemed to be working very effectively. And I I wonder at what point would, uh, like, if we're not being able to afford a pedestrian overpass, which would be very expensive. Like when we could look at something and like an alternative that might be cheaper, but create uh, greater safety. Mr. City Manager. Sure. sure. Thank you for that, uh, Councillor Rice. Um, certainly we can pass that on to our engineering department. They're the ones looking at this project okay. in more details. And so uh, actually our, our director is here and he's hearing that. So I'm sure he'll pass it on to his staff. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Radburn. Ready for a motion, Mayor Given? Sure, I certainly am. Uh, Councilor Arman, go ahead. I'd move the Council approve the strategic priorities chart for the term of October to December 2013. Thanks very much, Councilor Redburn. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Councilor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Given. I just want to speak to Councilor Rice about a, a pathway. I believe there's one should go there. Sometimes you create obstacles, children will find a way to go through them. And I believe that could be a partnership with the county and the provincial government because the bypass is owned by provincial government. There's two county schools there. And actually part of the youth delegate came to us from the county schools. So I, I do believe our city's lacking of a couple of pedways. So I have to say that I hope they do come. Okay, thanks. Council McLean, any further discussion or debate on the motion to approve the strategic priorities chart? Seeing nobody in the queue, then I'll call for the vote. You. That motion carries. Uh, then we move on to committee business and item 9.1, the Arts Development Committee from September 13th. Councillor Monroe. Thanks very much, Mayor Given. I'll move that Council receive the minutes of the Arts Development Committee meeting held September 13th, 2013. Thanks very much, Councillor Monroe. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Did anyone note any errors or omissions? Anything that we had to correct before we adopt them? Seeing nothing, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Council Monroe, anything you wanted to highlight from that set of minutes? Uh, certainly, Mayor Given. Uh, we uh, had a couple of uh, items for discussion. One of them was uh, uh, our second round of festival funding for the year. Uh, we managed to uh, help fund uh, the Grand Prairie Boys Choir. Uh, they've got a session coming, or pardon me, uh, their uh, male voice one and two, which was to be held uh, back, I guess, September 13th and 14th. So it's already, it's already come and gone. Uh, and we've uh, also uh, funded the, uh, uh, the ACFA 16th Annual Maple Sugar Festival for February uh, through to March uh, 2014. Uh, so those are a couple of uh, of the ones that we did. Or pardon me, one one last one in there that we did was the GP Singers Festival, uh, Festival of Carols, and that's uh, 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 I guess a, a festival that's been going on for many years. Uh, great success there as well too. It's the uh, singing Christmas tree, I believe, and that stuff. So it's it's good to have those organizations uh, funded. And, uh, and then we did a couple of uh, individual uh, scholarship fundings. Thanks very much, Councillor Monroe. Uh, we'd move on to 9.2, the Community Growth Committee from September 17th. Councillor Gustafson. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Given. I'll move the council receive the minutes of the Community Growth Committee meeting held September 17th, 2013. 
Thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Seeing nothing, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Gustafson, anything else you want to highlight from that set of minutes? Uh, yes, Mayor Given. We approved uh, an oil field support. Uh, some uh, company wants to put uh, three really big silos and an elevator in by the uh, train tracks on the east side, so it's a $4.5 million injection to uh, to the city here so congratulations on on those people developing that property we had a change of zoning we discussed and um, that's all mayor given thanks very much councillor Gustafson um, we can move on to 9.3 the 100th anniversary committee councillor rice I move oops I'm sorry I move that Council receive the minutes of the 100th Anniversary Committee meeting of Tuesday, September 17th. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Did anyone note any errors or omissions in that set of minutes? All the I's were dotted and the T's were crossed, and I will call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Rice, anything to highlight from that committee meeting? Just that planning for the 100th uh, anniversary uh, celebration uh, next year is now uh, uh, getting very, uh, very exciting. It's moving ahead at a rapid pace. Uh, we've had some trouble in the past trying to get people excited about it because, you know, two years or three years from now seemed like a long time, but now people are, are really embracing the idea and it's uh, planning is moving along extremely quickly. Great. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice, and thanks for your work on that committee. Uh, we move to the Pursuit of Excellence Committee from September 17th. Councillor McLean. Th thank you, Mayor Given. I move that Councillor receive the minutes of the Pursuit of Excellence Committee meeting held September 17, 2013. Thanks very much, Councillor McLean. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. very much and that motion carries. Council McLean, anything to highlight from that committee? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, there was some funding uh, given out. Uh, Sarah Kreese got it was $1,000 for athlete development for Canoe Polo. Uh, Kiana Lindsay was $500 for traveling funding for uh, dog handling to attend a, a junior national Canadian championship in uh, New Brunswick. Um, there was two given to Zach Pilgrim, uh, $750 for travel funding and 1,000 for athlete development for rugby. Uh, as well, there was uh, Elizabeth Auger who received $500 for travel funding for Bantam Girls Nationals in Bedford, Nova Scotia. And the other one as well, it was uh, Jared Larson received uh, athlete development for $760 uh, for soccer. There was also others that uh, applied for funding, but uh, not all the paperwork was done, so it was sent back to get all the paperwork done and follow procedure. So we'll probably hear back in the, in the later fall from that. And there was one that was very positive that came forward. There was a couple that came from uh, Taekwondo uh, Club in the city of Grand Prairie. Um, the Arctic Winter Games, as you might recall, about a year ago gave some funding. It's about starting a first tournament or a first uh, thing in the city. And they had their first tournament, and they were awarded $4,500. And they came to speak about it. And uh, I remember me and Councillor Radburn were there at that tournament, and they had uh, over 300 participants. I don't know how many parents, over 100 some people from the city of Edmonton. And I remember saying that they're, you know, this is like for seed money to to start a flower, but they already are a flower, and they're blossoming. So uh, total success in Art to Winter Games, what it's set up for. This speaks volumes. That's everything. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor McLean. Uh, Councillor Monroe, did you have a question for Councillor McLean? Sure, if I could. Uh, uh, thanks, Mayor Given. Uh, Councillor McLean, I was just wondering if you could uh, add some extra insight into the uh, dog handling athlete travel funding. Uh, I, I wouldn't have normally have thought of something like that as being funded. Yeah. Councillor McLean? Thank you very much, Councilor Monroe. You're correct. It was a, a close decision. It was three and two. It was talked about quite well at the committee, but it was approved by the majority to say, yes, go ahead. And they were awarded, I believe, was it $500? So uh, in this event, they also had to bring the animal to the area and as well, the parent went. So the uh, majority said yes, it was okay. Uh, Councilor Monroe? Yeah. 
So, um, and, and maybe you don't, uh, uh, I'm not sure if you'll know the answer, but like, I mean, what kind of uh, handling is this? Is this like where they jump through hoops and stuff or? <laughs> I'm going to be quite honest with you. I'm not quite sure. We could pass along and find out for you down the road. But I, I do believe it was a 3-2 decision, and it, it barely passed on the committee. And uh, we wish her well for going through the event. Thanks, Councillor McLean. Thanks very much, Councillor Monroe. Thanks, Councillor McLean. We'll move on to the Community Living Committee from September 17th as well. Councillor Crokin. Thank you, Mayor Gibbett. I move... Council received the minutes of the Community Living Committee meeting held September 17th, 2013. Thank you very much. Councillor Crokin, any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Seeing we'll none, be. I'll call for the vote. And while I'm calling for the vote, the people that are here, uh, often we have more coming out of our uh, uh, agenda items, but as Council's winding down its business, there's less uh, things coming forward from the committees. So I'm waiting for a couple more votes. Seeing none, one more. Thank you. That motion carries, so that's why we're receiving so many sets of minutes is because the committees are still working, but there's fewer things uh, just given the nature of where we are in the term. Except for Councillor Crokin's committee. He's still got stuff. Yeah. Thanks, Mayor Given. Yeah, they've just uh, been keeping me busy here, which is really good. Uh, I'd also make the motion that the Council authorize the City to participate in the Pilot Youth Young Adult Engagement Audit Project being proposed by Apathy is Boring. Just to speak to that briefly, um, Dale Dineman have made the presentation, and it was very exciting to see that uh, what they're trying to do is engage youth, and the, the, the ages might just leave me a bit here, but 13, 14, 15, to get involved in politics, to, to ask questions. It's, uh, it's a uh, funding from the FCSS. It's specific, uh, specific project funding. So it's, uh, it's exciting. Uh, as uh, all of you in the uh, our, our audience could tell, that our voting has been dropping for municipal, provincial, federal elections. So an initiative like this, uh, we, we really uh, commended Dale for, uh, for putting this on. So I urge you to support it. Thanks very much, Councillor Crokin. Uh, discussion and debate on the motion. I see Councillor Rice. I, I, didn't, I didn't see any uh, reference to uh, cost. Mayor, uh, Mayor Gibbons, $25,000 that is fully funded through FCSS. Great. Okay. Any uh, further discussion or debate on the motion? Questions or comments? Councillor McLean. Uh, th thank you, Mayor Gibbons. I think it's a very good initiative to Councillor Crokin uh, for Dale bringing it up. Uh, it speaks to, I believe, between 18 and 25 year olds. And as they say, if they go out and vote for the first time, they'll continue on voting. But if they miss a few votings, they might go for 20 years and not vote. But I was also hoping down the road, maybe in the next council, they'll look at maybe more influence on the schools, the younger children, uh, maybe help a little bit more and, and direct them in a different direction as well to voting. And uh, I know grade six are starting, but I think it's a good initiative, but I'm hoping for more for in the schools. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor McLean. Any further discussion or debate on the motion? Yeah, just to, to add to that, I think the Grand Prairie was on the cutting uh, cutting board, I guess, but uh, it did get cut to have internet voting. And our youth today uh, using the social media, I think would have got more involved or will get more involved, but it was cut by the province. So thanks, uh, thanks. Councillor McLean. Councillor Crokin, I see Councillor Rice in the queue. Okay, if funded by FCSS, so is that $80, $20? Dollars? Uh, yes, I believe so. 80, 20, that'd be 80 for the province and 20 uh, the city, uh, Grand Prairie. Right. Yeah. Thanks very much for that clarification, Councillor Crokin. Any further discussion? Motion? If not, I'll be looking for the vote. Okay, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Crokin. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I move Council approve the following selection of off-leash dog areas listed in order of priority and to bring forward the capital cost to construct these facilities to the 2014 capital budget review. First, Area 5 South Bear Creek off-leash recreational trails and the costs are $22,000 for that one. Area number two, or it's the, the second one, which is area two, Crystal Ridge, Northeast Neighborhood Off-Leash Area. It's a $10,000 budget item. 
The third one is area four, uh, Royal Oaks neighborhood off-leash areas, $30,500. The fourth one is area three, Crystal Ridge West neighborhood off-leash uh, area. It's at 15500 And then number five is just a contingency of $12,000 for a total of $90,000. Just to speak briefly to that, uh, Mayor Given, there was uh, approximately 20 or 25 sites that were um, designated as possibilities. Now, uh, administration went through and uh, highlighted that these four areas, as they're not one, two, three, four, but they're area five, two, four, and three, with this budget attached to go to the uh, 2014 capital budget review for approval. Uh, there still is, I understand from uh, Mr. Juniper, um, consultation to, of the neighborhoods where these were proposed. So it's not, uh, of course, it's going to do the capital, 2014 capital budget review. Thanks very much, Councillor Crooken. So clarification that this is just recommending these uh, the sites that would go forward to that budget review, that this isn't actually funding them at this time. It would be up to the next council to choose in context of the overall budget whether these are funded or not. That's right, Mayor Goodman. Thanks, Councillor Crokin. So I see uh, a few folks in the queue. I see Councillor Rice. Uh, I was just somewhat confused. Uh, in Mr. Juniper's report, he says that the proposed locations, uh, two, three, four, five, six, will meet the, the, so the six is a total and five isn't an area, like, so we're voting on area five, two, four, three? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so regardless of what his report says. Okay. Um, there was, uh, and just for clarity, there was one site that was recommended uh, that the committee felt uh, chose not to recommend forward to council. So that's why the numbering is different. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Radburn. We're given, I would respectfully ask that this motion be split so we can vote on each uh, part of the motion. So Councillor Radburn has asked for um, uh, five, there's five different parts that we could vote on each of the five different parts separately. Um, and so that motion is order, in order, we can ask for that at any time. And so we'll start with uh, part number one, area number five, the South Bear Creek Off-Leash Recreational Trails. I'd look for discussion and debate on that item. Councillor Rice, you're in the queue for that one. Oh, sorry. oh, okay. I'm I'm urging uh, that you not support this one. Um, any of the others, I have no problem with. Uh, Muskocee Park, um, that area in, in Muskocee Park is used extensively. It's it's a family area. School classes are held there. Um, I don't think it's it's appropriate uh, for an off leash area. I think the other, certainly the other three areas uh, fit, and I support those. And uh, but I'm I'm urging you not to support this particular location as one of them. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Councillor O'Toole. Yes, thank you very much, Mayor Given. I have had a number of phone calls and emails in the last couple of weeks regarding the the uh, off-leash dog parks. And the one of a major bone of contention is the South Bear Creek off-leash recreational trail system. Um, there's a fee of approximately $22,000 and I was wondering if somebody could give me some kind of an idea what that money would be spent for. Okay. Uh, I wonder if maybe we'd direct that to the community living director. Yeah. Mr. Roth, can you speak to the uh, expenses associated with the uh, Area number five, as you quickly try to call up the report. <laughs> Mr. Roth? Uh, Your Worship, uh, certainly the most of the expenses would be incurred for signage, uh, waste receptacles, and uh, dog bag dispensers, um, having them over spread out throughout that, uh, out that area. Thank you very much for the clarification. So totally got the answer to your question. Yes, um, I'm in full uh, support of Area 2, Area 4, and Area 3. I am still haven't been convinced uh, on Area 5. Thanks, 
very much, Councillor O'Toole. Councillor Wong. Yes, thank you very much, Mayor Given. I, I'm also concerned about their Area 5, and the reason I'm concerned is I know how well utilized that area is. It's our connection from our trails to the county's trails, and I know there are people who mountain bike through that area, people that run and bike, bike their way along that uh, service road that goes past our water treatment plant and the landfill. Um, my concern is that this area is currently being proposed without any type of fencing to avoid those kind of conflicts. Um, also, because it is so close to roads, you know, having some kind of fencing would also be a safety barrier for the for the animals that are in the that are using that area. So, I would urge council not to approve this location as it is right now. Um, perhaps administration could come back at a later time with a new design. That, that might work. Um, I believe this is the field which is directly southeast of the water treatment plant. Um, and I know that I use it a lot, and I, I know that several friends of mine use that a lot, and we pass by that area all the time. So we are concerned that it does create a barrier to travel through, um, whether you're going to the county's trails or whether you're, you're continuing on east into another uh, green park area. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Everybody's going to have a shot at this. So Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, I also was uh, speaking uh, in opposition to this area, um, and uh, most of it's been covered. I just uh, am really not comfortable with respect to the safety. Uh, I think with everybody's good intentions, um, I think that uh, um, I think problems could exist, and I don't want any reason for somebody not to want to cycle or walk any of our trails in our Muskegee Park and resulting trails. And uh, I think uh, they've done, I think administration, uh, based upon the input, did a great job in terms of uh, doing the consultation. Um, I know it will be signed, uh, and they found a location that's quite a ways out. But I, for me, uh, I look at the park as a whole, and I, I really... Uh, not supportive of an unfenced off-leash uh, park in Muskegon City Park. Thank you very much, Councillor Redburn. Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, this one was, uh, I had quite a bit thinking about this one, but I, I came to the conclusion I believe it would be a good thing for the city. And uh, a couple of reasons why I believe it would be is, um, well, I was mostly a cat person so recently, but coyote family seemed to get down my cats. and. We just became owners of a, a young dog. But besides that, uh, I remember back in 2010, my first term council, we were in uh, the beautiful city of Halifax, Nova Scotia, for the FCM, Federation of Canadian Municipalities. And you have one of the oldest cities in Canada on the very point of an off leash dog area. Um, yes, I'm concerned about picking up the aftermath of the, of the animals because I believe a park, if it's, once it starts, it should be shut down until it's cleaned by volunteers. I believe insurance for dog owners that might bite somebody and they don't have insurance to cover their glasses or uh, physical harm. But I also do believe we are, should be an open city. And the reason why I'm in favor of this is because I've walked some of this area. And this is on the east side of South Bear. If you go east and west, and the west, uh, the area is already being used. So, and people have their dogs off the leash as well already. So if you pick the one area, you can say the other area, you know they're not allowed or there's gonna be a fine. And uh, so I, I will be voting in favor. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor McLean. Councillor Monroe. Thanks, Mayor Given. Um, I think I share uh, the same concerns that Councillor Wong, O'Toole, and Bradburn have already listed. Uh, I, I won't, oh, and Councillor Rice, sorry. Uh, I don't think there's a need for me to repeat them at this time, Mayor Given, but uh, uh, safety was, was a huge concern. And I would just, uh, um, uh, the fencing part of me was the, uh, uh, the safety concern of mine. Uh, however, I'd like to see administration go back and see if we could identify some other locations where we can enhance our dog park areas. Thanks Thank very you. much, Councilor Monroe. Councilor Gustafson. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, I'm definitely in favor of having some places for for dog dog owners to do some recreating with their with their pets and stuff. Um, but did I hear you correctly saying we're spending ninety thousand dollars on signs and garbage cans? And then why do we need a twelve thousand dollar contingency to go with that? Uh, 
so the total budget is 90,000 for all of the different sites. Some sites include fencing, uh, which is the ones that are uh, more significant cost. Uh, this is a really quite a large area. Uh, I don't know if, admit, and so that's why the cost is more expensive here. Uh, if administration wants to, they can give a highlight of maybe the cost of the different uh, associated with different areas. Ms. Roth? Excuse me for one minute here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Your Worship. Um, my apologies, my report didn't line up with the council motion here. Um, essentially, each area has a breakdown budget for each area. Some sites do include fencing, and uh, primary of the considerations in each of the locations is fencing, signage, waste receptacles, being garbage cans, and uh, dog bag dispensers. Depending on the size of the locations, for example, the South Bear Creek uh, proposed location, area number five, because of the size of it, there's certainly a significant amount of, of uh, much more uh, receptacles and signage needed. Plus, it also includes installation and take into consideration staff uh, accessing those areas. I can run through each one of the locations if you wish. Um, area two, the Crystal Ridge location, uh, it has $3,500 in fencing, $750 in signage, 5,000 in waste receptacles, and dog di bag dispensers is only $750. Area number four. That, that's okay, Gary. I didn't, I didn't hear you say fencing in the first time, so uh, yeah. as long as there's fencing in there, that's that's more realistic. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks very much, Mr. Roth. Yeah, and, and uh, just to highlight, there was, uh, the other fen areas are the ones that had fencing. So. Okay. Uh, I see Councillor Cropin. Thanks, Mayor Gibbon. Um, depending on how the uh, how the vote goes, that uh, South Bear Creek off leash uh, the recreational trail, and I should know this, but will they still be able to go there with their dogs on a leash? Okay, Mr. Roth. Yeah. Mr. Roth? Uh, your, your Worship, uh, certainly it's only a portion of the trails at South Bear Creek that are being considered as an off leash area. It's only in the far southeast corner of the city that is. Uh, being considered. The remainder of the trails would still be required to have an animal or a dog on leash. Thank you. Okay, uh, okay. thanks, uh, Councillor Crokin. Looks like everybody else had to go, so I'll just uh, say that I will be supporting the uh, recommendation. Uh, I think uh, significant areas of the uh, Muskegee are already being used as informal off-leash areas. Uh, I believe it would be an improvement to have a dedicated area, and I believe that uh, the dog owners that would take the time to go to this off-leash area um, would most likely be the most responsible dog owners. Uh, and so I certainly <coughs> appreciate that. Um, so I will be supporting the recommendation as it was uh, put forward. Uh, I think that this is uh, something that would be a good addition to the community and ultimately would prove out to be very successful. So um, I will be supporting the motion. Uh, any further discussion or debate on the motion? Now we're just talking about Area 5, the South Bear Creek off-leash uh, recreational trails. Councillor O'Toole. Yes, uh, thanks, Mayor Given. I was just at that meeting and I was just concerned there is a possibility of enhancing the existing uh, dog leash park right now. I uh, was wondering if maybe we could look at uh, doing that a little earlier than expected. Sorry, Councillor O'Toole. So, uh, um, we're, we're the, yeah, I know. Uh, I'm just saying that I'm still not in favor of this, and I would like to see the money go towards the enhancement of the new one. Well, at this point, all we're doing is recommending forward to budget. So we're deciding yeah. whether or not anything goes to budget for consideration. If it doesn't pass here, it won't show up at budget. That budget is where it would be funded. So, um, you know, we can make a follow up motion, I suppose, if there's uh, other items that council members want to refer to budget. Uh, but at this point, the, the motion was that this specific item go forward or not. And, and that's what we were doing. So. Any further discussion on that on that motion? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Um, okay, I'm looking for one more. Thank you very much. Okay, and that motion uh, fails with the uh, Six opposed, and uh, we move on to area number two, uh, Crystal Ridge uh, Northeast neighborhood off-leash area. 
Um, so that motion uh, is on the floor by Councillor Crokin, since they were all one and then split. So I'll call for a discussion and debate on uh, area number two, Crystal Ridge. Any discussion or debate on that motion? Councillor Wong. Yes, thank you, Mayor Given. Um, I will speak in favor of this one in the next three. Well, I'll speak in favor of this one for the next three. I believe that uh, we do need a lot more uh, off-leash dog areas in this city, uh, people who who own pets, they realize that their dogs need to run. And uh, I like where this now ends up in priority. We do need some more dog parks up in the north side of town. We do, we've had one in the south for a while and people have been driving quite a distance just to get their dogs to run or allow their dogs to run free. And uh, having more spread out throughout the city um, just makes sense. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilor Wong. Any further discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries unanimously, so we move on to area number four, the Royal Oaks neighborhood off-leash area. Any discussion or debate on this item? Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Given. I'm for all the rest of them coming up, and as well, this one is right behind Cal Tire. It's a drainage area. And uh, it's not being utilized right now for anything. We got a few of them like that in the city. And there ain't very many homes, maybe eight or nine, 10 houses around there and an apartment building. And I believe there's a fence there at the apartment building that could be corrected if I'm wrong there. So I think this one's a really good area for the city. Thanks, Councilor McLean. Any further discussion or debate on area number four, Royal Oaks? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. Motion carries unanimously, and we move on to number four, area number three, Crystal Ridge West. Any discussion or debate on this recommended, recommended area? Seeing nobody in the queue, seeming like we everybody had their stick of peace on all of them, then I will call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Um, and then finally, we had the contingency um, that we split uh, just because it was one of the five items. And so we'll call for the vote on the contingency. Any discussion or debate on that motion? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries with one opposed. Uh, so all of those items are now referred, sorry, uh, all of the items that passed, uh, area number two, Crystal Ridge, Area number four, Royal Oaks. Area number three, uh, Crystal, Ridge, Crystal Ridge West. And the contingency will be forwarded onto the budget where the next council will ultimately decide on those. Councillor O'Toole, did you have a follow-up on this? Yes, Mayor Given. Uh, I'd like to uh, have the budget review incorporate the $22,000 that was originally delegated to the South Peace. South Bear Creek uh, off-leash recreational trail be forwarded to a possible enhancement of the existing off-leash dog park. Okay. okay, so that motion is the uh, to um, uh, recommend forward to budget um, up to twenty-two thousand dollars for enhancements to the existing dog leash park. That's, That's correct. Excuse me, off-leash dog. Park. Okay, so that motion is in order. Any discussion or debate on that motion? Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Goodman. Um, certainly willing to consider. Uh, uh, Gary, or administration, any ideas as to how that money could be spent and invested wisely? Mr. Roth. At the uh, committee meeting, staff had uh, suggested that this, it is possible to perhaps extend the, make the off-leash area bigger at the South Bear Creek uh, existing ballpark including potentially um, having some, using some uh, space on the slope to the west side of the trail and then fencing off an area on the other side of the trail. Uh, it has to be further developed, but that was uh, some suggestions that staff had given when it was discussed at Community Living Committee. Okay, any further discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. Motion carries, so that uh, is forwarded to budget as well. And Councillor Crokin, I believe you had uh, one last item of business from this committee meeting. Thanks, Mayor Given. I'm going to have uh, Councillor Rice will be uh, 
uh, making this motion. I'll be speaking against it. Okay. Councillor Rice. I would move that council deny the request for funding assistance for installation of a playground at South Bear Creek and deny the request for the installation of a playground structure at South Bear Creek Ball Diamonds. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rice. Is there anybody that would like to speak uh, to the motion? <laughs> yes, uh, Mayor Gibbon. Councillor Crokin. Well, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> I, uh, I would like to speak to that, that we do have another jewel, and that is our, our South uh, Bear Creek Ball Diamonds. There's been an awful lot of work done down there with the, uh, with the grandstands and the batting uh, cages, uh, the uh, concessions. I've been down there a number of times, and uh, I feel that maybe there wasn't enough uh, information Given at the time, I, I believe 110% that uh, our children must be protected against not only fall balls, but maybe bats that break and go flying or whatever. It's, it's, it's pretty uh, dangerous if, uh, if a ball does get at any, well, at adults too, but usually you can catch them. Kids will be talking and uh, not paying attention. Most of the time, if they're having a good time, so I would uh, urge council to uh, deny uh, to uh, vote against this, and I will be making another motion to bring it back to administration to work with the South uh, Bear Creek Ball Association on these diamonds, on the location, and the type of material that has been approved uh, by the builder. And I can't remember what the builder's name was that that builds these. Uh, Yep, and it's 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 safety is the utmost. So uh, please uh, um, vote uh, with me to uh, to deny this, and then we will have my new motion. Am I denying it or am I requesting well, it? Just to be, uh, yeah. most often our motions are made in the positive. Yeah. Um, so this is a little bit of a backwards one. So if you vote for the motion, you're voting against the proposal. So, Councillor Crokin, I think you'll be voting against the motion, which means you're voting That's for right. the proposal. That's what I was getting to. Okay. That's right. So we're clear. Uh, Councillor Wong. Thank you, Mayor Given. I'm going to vote with Councillor Crokin with the double negative. <laughs> <laughs> and the, my feeling is that uh, Grand Prairie has a very young population, which means that it has a lot of young kids as well. And both those generations like to play and there's no reason why they shouldn't be allowed to play in the same area together. Um, it's quite obvious that we can't possibly be the first community to have playground structures near Ball Diamonds. Other people, other communities probably have proven that it can be made safe. I think that we should allow uh, the South Peace Ball Association at least the courtesy of investigating that and, and uh, allowing the installation of that playground structure. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. I see Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Given, and thank the, the group representing South Bear come about the, the net over top. I do know the playground will work very well. Uh, the town of Grand Cash um, has got a playground that was all by donations up by the uh, their area that works very well, but it's a little bit set back. So we were wondering on the community location and the netting has sold me in the fence around as well. So just want to ask the mayor one more question. So. I want this. I want it to go through, so I'm going to vote no on this, so that we can. Okay, thank you, Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Given. I will also be voting no uh, to this. I believe that this is a this uh, project has merit and should be among the others that are brought forward f to our budget deliberations. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Um, I don't see anybody else in the queue. I'll say uh, at the committee I voted against this motion. Um, and so I'll be voting against it here as well. I, I certainly support moving this forward to the budget. I think if there's a need to review the location or the implementation, uh, that there's an opportunity to do that uh, with uh, South Peace Ball. Uh, and that's why I certainly support it moving forward to budget. Uh, ultimately, it'll have to uh, contend with all the other budget requests at the same time. Um, but moving it forward does give an opportunity for administration to work with the proponents to see if there's ways to address the concerns that were raised. Um, any further discussion or debate on the motion? Councillor O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I'm going to uh, vote. Careful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> With Helen Rice. 
And the reason being, I don't think the location of the playground that we have at this particular time is the right location. Um, and we have a number of people in administration that this sort of uh, situation, playground, goes through. We've got crime prevention, we've got uh, engineering, and uh, I just feel that I'm going to stick with uh, their recommendation. And if they want to come back and change the location, uh, I would probably be very much in favor. Okay. Thanks very much, Councilor Jewell. Councilor Monroe. Uh, thanks, Mayor Given. I think because everyone else has spoken about it, you might as well throw in. Uh, originally a committee, I did uh, not support this coming forward to this council meeting. However, I think that uh, given the information that we have now, it sounds like perhaps this uh, group is hearing uh, loud and clear some of our concerns, Councillor O'Toole, uh, and that there, it sounds like there may be a possibility for relocating it somewhere within the ball diamonds. Uh, and so I think this gives them the opportunity to... Um, to have another look at it and bring it back to budget. Uh, and all we're doing is allowing them the opportunity to bring it forward to budget. So I guess uh, once again, voted against the tech committee, but uh, at this point I will be supporting uh, Councillor Crokin's motion to allow this to go through. Thank you. By, by voting no. Okay. <laughs> End of the term. Three years, three years. Um, Councillor Crokin. Thank you, Mayor Given. I guess in, in closing, I want to thank uh, Council for uh, for this very positive no vote. Okay, so I think we've all had an opportunity on this one, so I'll call for the vote. Just to clarify, the motion was in the negative, so if you're voting against the motion, that means that, um, that it would be referred on to budget. Uh, sorry, thank you, Councillor Crokin. Councillor Crokin follows up with a subsequent motion to refer it on to budget. Okay. So we're going to have this one. If it if this motion fails, then there would need to be another motion to refer it on to budget. Okay, just so we're all clear. Okay, so I'll call for the vote. Okay. And that motion um, is all read, so the motion fails. Uh, Councillor Crokin, would you care to make a follow-up motion? Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, as worded, I'll let Audrey do that, but what I would like to do... Just do the exact opposite of what the last motion Yeah. <laughs> Request <laughs> funding assistance for... Rather than deny. Okay. <laughs> Request uh, funding assistance for installation of playground and uh, the installation of playground structure at South Bear Creek Ball Diamonds to be determined. So maybe to be referred to the 2014 budget. Oh, oh. I'll grant you there's some additional. We don't have any money. Well, we had 20,000 left from, no, to the 2014 budget review. Yes, Mayor Given. Thanks very much, Councillor Crokin. Sorry for being a little bit lighthearted there. Uh, so it is a motion to refer this on to budget uh, where it'll be considered in context with all the other budget decisions that the new council takes. Any discussion or debate on the motion? We all know what we're voting for. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. I'll call for the vote. You. That motion carries. Councillor Crokin, there couldn't possibly be any other business from your committee meeting. Mayor Given, I looked at, we have covered absolutely everything. You, you put everything on my committee there and we did a good job. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Crokin. So we'd move to 9.6 Combative Sports Commission minutes from September 18th. Councillor O'Toole. Yes, thank you very much, Mayor Given. I'd like Council to receive the minutes of the Combative Sports Commission meeting held September 18th, 2013. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Just a couple comments. Uh, we did have a uh, commission, the commission reviewed circumstances pertaining to a decision to reinstate the promoter and event licenses for a promoter named Five Star Athletics. Uh, they failed to make a payment on time and doing our, through our bylaws, uh, we revoked the license and the promoter's uh, event license as well. Uh, we reviewed that in a meeting and we reinstated the promoter. 
uh, payment has been made. Um, one of the issues that we're dealing with right now is uh, federal laws pertaining to amateur of events and the province and the federal government are at uh, wit's end on how to, to uh, deal with this situation where previously amateurs and professionals could fight on the same card. Um, at this present time, the city has taken a stance that we will not allow any amateur events until we get the approval of the province. And that's where we're at right now. And uh, just a couple other uh, updates. Uh, as soon as the, the vote was taken, I did phone the promoter right away, let him know that the uh, arrangements and the decision was turned and he was very thankful and uh, apologized. There was a number of uh, housekeeping duties that he wasn't following up on and uh, he agreed that it was completely his fault and nothing to do with the city. So there's my report, sir. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. So we move to the Community Safety Committee from September 24th. Councillor Wong. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I move that Council receive the minutes of the Community Safety Meeting held uh, September 24th, 2013. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Everything in order? I will call for the vote. Thank you. Motion carries. Councillor Wong. I move that Council approve the award of option year three for supply of road salt, tender T41546-11 to NSC Mater Minerals, Inc. in the amount of $266,070, excluding GST. And speaking to this, Mayor Given, this was a, a, a three-year contract with, with uh, escalations built into the contract. Um, the third year was an option. Uh, administration tells us that uh, this three-year optional amount is still lower than what uh, a new tender would come out at. So uh, this is budgeted and it's probably a good choice. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. I see Councillor Rice in the queue for question and comment. Is NSC a new company? I, it seems to me we always before did Windsor, Windsor or Sifto and I've not heard of this company before. We've been using this company for the last two years. Have we? Okay, thank you. Nova Scotia. Okay, I see um, nobody else in the queue, so I'll call for the vote on this motion. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Wong? I would like to ask another councillor to make this series of motions if possible. I'd like to offer amendment at, at the appropriate time. Okay. So, um, Councillor Wong is looking to make an amendment. So, if another councillor would care to step up, uh, we have a bylaw, uh, bylaw C1226, the Animal and Responsible Pet Ownership Bylaw. Um, to pass this, we need to do three readings. Uh, the first reading, there's no discussion and debate. Uh, so, if we can get a motion for a first reading, Councillor O'Toole. Yes. Uh, bylaw C1226, Animal and Responsible Pet Ownership. I'd like to Make a recommendation that first reading be given to bylaw C1226, Animal and Responsible Pet Ownership. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Tool. So as I said, there's no discussion and debate on first reading. I'll call for the vote. Okay, I don't see one to ring in yet. Thank you. And that motion carries, so we could move on to second reading, Councillor O'Toole. Uh, the second reading be given, I uh, recommend that second reading be given to bylaw C-1226, Animal and Responsible, responsible Pet Ownership. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. So an opportunity now on second reading for discussion and debate. I see Councillor Rice in the queue first. I guess I, I'm concerned that we maybe haven't done enough in terms of education. This is a huge change. Uh, this removes the uh, um, the the one noted breeds or something. You know how, um, and I and I recognize the rationale for that, but it does remove that. It addresses Councillor O'Toole snakes, uh, uh, but it, it's a huge change. I, I and I. I uh, you know, I, I haven't received any input on it, and I wonder if that's because maybe people don't realize the implications. And uh, 
I guess I just need some some reassurance that council is convinced that we have indeed, uh, you know, done enough education so the public un understands this big change. It would mean that if you have a pit bull now, you don't have to keep it penned up. You don't have to have it fenced. You don't have to have insurance, that type of thing. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Uh, Councillor Wong. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. Um, this bylaw has gone through some extensive consultation. Uh, what Councillor Rice is referring to is the removal of restricted breed designation. So the pit bull was the only one that we had on that list. And now there's a new section for vicious animals. So if an animal exhibits uh, signs of being vicious, they, they would uh, require those same requirements as the, what used to be um, there for restricted breeds. Uh, the, the real tr hard part about um, the restricted breed was other than a genealogical test, it would, it was, or genetics test, it was impossible to determine whether a dog was a pit bull or not. Um, a dog that may look like a pit bull could, could be a number of any dozens of breeds of dogs. So the administration always had trouble with that. Um, anyway, um, that, that isn't the, the part of the bylaw that I had any trouble with. I think that there has been enough consultation on that. And uh, the reason we haven't heard anything was probably because it, people understood it. It's, it's really common sense that if you, know, if you do have an animal that should be restricted, it should be because of its behavior, regardless of its breed. Um, the only section that I'd like to speak on, and I'd like to propose an amendment, that uh, Schedule B include a section for um, dogs off-leash uh, other than in an off-leash area. Uh, that, that is already included in the bylaw that it's, it's illegal to do that within the city. However, within Schedule B of, in the fines, it isn't explicitly stated. And that, that's troublesome to me because it, it's, it's an area that administration gets a lot of calls on, um, yet it's not a specific item in there. I think that it gives people who are flipping through there a false impression that maybe they are allowed to do that. Uh, the the off-leash fine was in the old bylaw. It was in bylaw C-989. There's no reason why it should car shouldn't carry forward into this new bylaw, which is supposed to make things more clear. And instead, I think it makes it less clear. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Wong. So we'll accept that uh, motion to amend Schedule B. Uh, to include a specific provision around uh, dogs off-leash in an area other than an off-leash dog area. That's correct? That's how you do it? correct, yeah. Okay, so um, that motion of amendment is in order. Uh, so I look for discussion and debate on the amendment as proposed as by Councillor Wong. Any discussion or debate on the amendment as proposed by Councillor Wong? I have a few councillors in the queue, so um, if you're in the queue, we'll have you uh, speak to that. Um, I see uh, one administration coming in, and so I wonder, uh, I have a feeling that may be from our um, bylaw manager. Um, Chris, would you like to speak to that? You may be able to add something. Uh, absolutely. I just want to suggest some um, alternative wording just to be consistent with what exists in the bylaw right now that Councillor Wong was referring to. If any other council members have their microphone on, could you please turn it off? And then Chris, uh, put your microphone on, just that way it makes it onto the web and the recording. Okay, yeah, it's back on. So I'm just suggesting that um, if we go with the alternative wording, that we go with, okay. I'm suggesting we go with section 3.6, animal run at large, uh, along with the $100 fine. Suggestion from administration, just in terms of wording, uh, Councillor Wong, we'll see if that meets the intent, adding uh, section 3.6, under section 3.6, dog at large, sorry, running at large, mm -hmm. and $100 specified fine. Councillor Wong? Still not sure if everyone understands that a dog running at large isn't a dog that is just walking next to their owner without a leash. So, Councillor Wong, it's up to you. Administration's yeah. making a recommendation. So, if you, I choose not to accept that as a friendly amendment. Okay. okay. So, Councillor Wong's going to stick with his uh, original wording to uh, amend Schedule B to include a specified fine for uh, dog off leash in an area other than an off leash dog area. Okay. Okay. Uh, I see Councillor Monroe in the queue. Um, 
Thanks very much, Mayor Given. Um, I mean, as far as I can tell, this is uh, uh, can still be 3.6 as far as I can say, and just have Councillor Wong's uh, uh, wording in there and the $100 fine. Um, I, I really see no issue uh, with this and would be uh, in support of the motion. Thanks very much, um, Councillor Monroe. Any further discussion or debate on Councillor Wong's motion to amend? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries with one opposed. So we'll move on to second reading uh, as amended. So Councillor O'Toole had made a motion for second reading. Councillor Wong amended second reading to change the bylaw. And now so we're voting on Councillor O'Toole's motion with, that now includes the amendment. Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Given. I just wanted to speak that uh, I might want to add another amendment uh, uh, on this. I believe it's very well good um, not to leave your animal unattended. I mean, really, you shouldn't be leaving your animal unattended to go into a store or anywhere. I believe there's lots of good stuff in this, um, as well as not leaving an animal like a dog in the back of a truck without being constrained in a way so it doesn't fall out and get dragged. But there's one I would have contentious on it is having four animals in one home. Besides the, the dog having puppies, I find that a little bit high. So I'm asking administration, Chris, what other areas, because I believe four seems to be, and some of our lots are called small lots now. They're 30 feet wide. And to have four dogs in one house, like, are we kidding? Can you please speak to that, Chris? Uh, certainly I can. So pr our existing bylaw presently allows for up to five. So it's actually a reduction from what exists today. Um, when we talk about four, that's, um, so without being inclusive of cats and dogs, it's not, it wouldn't be like four dogs and four cats. Um, it's really kind of striking a balance. Uh, one of the things that we struggle with right now is the way the bylaw reads is it says five per residence. So if you have a, a basement suite, for instance, does that now mean that you can have 10 animals at a property, right? So I think we've closed some of those gaps that existed before, but uh, we figured four does strike a balance and is consistent with uh, what most other municipalities that we researched were doing. So we, we considered that kind of the, the balance. Um, very much, Mr. Just want to finish up there, Mayor Given. To Chris, uh, so you could have potentially, it could be worded that you're only allowed to have two dogs per resident, I mean, within a phase-in period. Um, and then you can have, you're saying up to four, you can have two dogs, two cats, or whatever else, a spider, whatever, um, they consider a pet. Uh, maybe snakes, so two. But I, I, I'm going to make try to make a friendly amendment. I'm hoping uh, that uh, a phase-in period or whatever of, uh, no matter up or down resident, uh, two dogs per residence, and you can have up to four if you want two cats. I believe four dogs in one house is absolutely too many. So Councillor McLean, we're gonna to need to be a little bit more specific about uh, the motion. Yes, I don't have the number. Chris, where, what area is that in? I, I didn't highlight it. Councillor Rice, recommending, suggesting 2.18. Mm. So Councillor McLean, what is your wording? How do you wanna change? Um, it's current animal tag. Is that 2.8, Chris? 1.8. One, one eight. One eight. Yeah, I was going to say it's not 1, 2.8. Yeah, I'm off on here. 2. Point. Um, that three months are older. Uh, I believe it should be worded, that, uh, worded in a way that uh, a household should not have more than two dogs per household up to a limit of four animals. So then you can add the, the cats or whatever you want to add. Four dogs seems a little bit high. Okay, so Councillor uh, McLean, you're making a motion uh, to amend section 2.18 to uh, specify a maximum of two dogs per household uh, for a total of up to two animals, sorry, four animals. Okay, okay, so I'll uh, uh, roll that motion in order. Uh, look for discussion debate on the amendment. Um, Anybody that would wish to speak to the amendment? Councillor Rice, I see you in the queue still. Are you to speak to the amendment? Okay. I'm not sure that that Councillor McLean's uh, amendment addresses 
Mr. Manuel's concern that uh, older in the same residence within the city. Uh, so that would mean if you have a basement suite, uh, you could have double the number. Like I, I'm thinking that wording should be amended or you're not going to accomplish what you want to, you put the potential arises for you not to accomplish what you want to accomplish. But I don't know how you would say the same municipal address or I, I'm not sure how you would would word that. I'll speak to Councillor Rice if they would. Please, Councillor McLean, ring into the queue if you think. Oh, I thought I did. Sorry about that, Mayor Given. Councillor McLean. Uh, to Councillor Rice uh, asking about the wording, I think the wording is good because now you can have eight dogs if you have an upper and lower suite. So this would change it to minimum of four, and most homes don't have upper and lower suites in neighborhoods. So it would limit it to possibly just two. And then, but right now you could maybe go eight by the wording if you don't make the change. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Councillor McLean. Any further discussion or debate on the motion to amend? Councillor Wong. Thank you, Mayor Given. I know it seems like council's being anti-dog here today, but I'm sure everyone that's not the case. Um, I think that administration has done its job and done its research in terms of what's reasonable in a community and uh, reducing from five to four is already a step um, that addresses Councillor McLean's concerns. And I believe that uh, four is a reasonable number based on the comparable cities that they looked at. Thanks, Councillor Wong. Any further discussion or debate on the motion to amend? Uh, seeing nobody else in the queue, then I'll call for the vote on Councillor McLean's amendment. Thank you. That motion does not carry. Uh, so we'll stay with Councillor O'Toole's motion for second reading, as he made and as was amended by Councillor Wong. I look for. Uh, any further discussion or debate on second reading as amended? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries, so we can move on uh, to a motion to have third reading. In order to have all three readings of a bylaw in one evening, we have to have a motion approving that. Uh, that motion must pass unanimously for third reading to go forward here tonight. Otherwise, the bylaw would go forward to a future council meeting which in this case would be after the election. So, Councillor O'Toole, would you? Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I recommend the Council have the third reading of Bylaw C-1226, the Animal and Responsible Pet Ownership. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. So, a motion to have third reading of this bylaw here tonight um, would, as amended. Thank you. I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion does not carry, so the bylaw will not get past this term, and we'll come back for the new council after the election. We move on to item, uh, sorry, uh, Councillor Wong, this was your committee. Um, if you have any um, uh, just additional items that you want to highlight from that set of minutes. Sure, I'll, I'll let uh, council and the public uh, know that we had a delegation from Safe Communities. Uh, they were requesting this comment of a staff member to help organize and implement and oversee safety city school programming. Uh, and they were looking for a one-time grant of $30,000 to help cover the costs of uh, HVAC system repairs and replacements um, to their building as well as East Trough. Um, committee directed administration to uh, get some more information for us and report back to a future meeting. Uh, there was also a letter from residents of the uh, Southwood Park Place condominium who submitted a letter requesting that uh, the repaving of 79th Avenue. Um, the committee decided to uh, just receive their receive a report for information. Administration has basically told us that the 2014 program, um, has, the, the paving has already been decided and that 79th Ave could be considered in the 2015 program, and that's something that they would probably be looking at internally. And finally, there was one last item that was referred from Council. There was 92nd Street along 100th Avenue. Some, we had a delegation come at the last Council meeting asking about safety concerns and 
uh, for a improved signage or some kind of indication to people driving along that street that uh, that the areas in front of their house were allowed to be parked in um, during certain times of the day. So uh, committee directed administration to review the options for improved signage. Um, any geometric up to upgrades to that section will be uh, will be open for discussion at a future uh, committee meeting when that road eventually does get designed for twinning. And that's everything. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. So we'd move on to the uh, 9.8 Corporate Services Committee meeting from September 24th. Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I would move that uh, Council receive the minutes of the Corporate Services Committee meeting held September 24th, 2013. Thanks very much, Councillor Redburn. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Seeing nothing, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Um, Councillor Radburn, we make the next motion. Thank you. I move council authorize the county of Grand Prix number one to participate in an application for interior finishes and displays for the Philip J. Curie Dinosaur Museum submitted by the county of Grand Prix number one under the regional collaboration component of the regional collaboration program. And further, the city of participant agrees to abide by the terms of the conditional grant agreement governing the purpose and use of the grant funds. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a yeah, complex motion, but I think basically it's a, we're, we're supporting the application for regional collaboration grant uh, for finishes and uh, interior finishes and displays for the Philip J. Curie Dennis Museum. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Uh, discussion debate, Councillor Crokin. Thanks, Mayor Goodwin. Is this going to cost us any more money? Councillor Radburn? Yeah, great question. No. The money, uh, we either get it from the government, provincial government, or not. We're not putting any money into it as a city. Thank you. Anymore. Anymore. No more. I don't know. Thanks very much, <laughs> Councillor Radburn. Any further discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I just note that this is as a result of a discussion that we held at an intermunicipal meeting uh, with all the municipalities in the region, and we discussed opportunities to best leverage these regional collaboration grants to ensure that our region of the province was seeing uh, money. It was recognized that this is the most developed grant application. This one and the one that follow are the most developed grant applications. And, uh, and so receive full support of all the municipalities in the region, including the city. I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I would move that uh, Council authorize Town of Wembley to, to participate in an application for the West Regional Water Line Project submitted by the Town of Wembley under the Regional Collaboration component of the Regional Collaboration Program. And further, the city, a participant agrees to abide by the terms of the conditional grant agreement governing the purpose and use of the grant funds. Uh, similar type, except this is uh, an application um, to uh, do a feasibility study to follow up the South Peace Regional Water Feasibility Study. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Any discussion or debate on this motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. And uh, Councillor Radburn, anything else to highlight from that set of minutes? Uh, thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Uh, just uh, well, three other uh, items to, uh, to provide an overview for. We did review uh, a review of our investment, investment portfolio, um, and our service provider was there to answer questions along with uh, our staff. Uh, we also uh, looked at a, a report on our um, program uh, department, business enhancement review uh, program and process, and we uh, chose and uh, directed administration to uh, move the Crystal Center engineering services and inspection services up in the list to be uh, the next uh, departments that would uh, uh, have the review. And finally, uh, we did support a motion uh, to... Uh, uh, to send forward to budget a request from Community Futures for $10,000 uh, for each of three years um, to support the Northern Alberta Youth Entrepreneur Camp. Thank you.
Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Uh, I believe that handles all of our committee business. We had no items of correspondence. Um, sorry, thank you very much, Mr. Jimmy. We had 9.9, .9, our added item. Thank you. We just, this agenda is so exciting, we had to add something else to it. Uh, <laughs> so the item from uh, our Council Committee of the Whole, Councillor Radburn, the Hillside Social Housing Properties. Thank you. I'd move council approve the city owned duplexes on 108th Avenue be demolished and that utilities for the duplexes be terminated pending funding approval during the 2014 capital budget deliberations. We've had, uh, yeah, this was happened in the community, community, committee of the whole meeting previous. So I think that uh, the explanation is uh, we've had uh, discussion. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Any discussion or debate on uh, this motion? Uh, essentially, it. Uh, is authorizing their demolition subject to the budget being approved yeah, in correct. the fall. Correct. Uh, or at the budget review. Any discussion or debate on that motion? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Now we're finished all of our committee business. <laughs> we had no items of correspondence and Next up is delegation business. For all those of you who stuck it out, thank you very much. Um, the first uh, present, well, the, the first uh, uh, presentation was uh, from the Honourable Wayne Drysdale. If we could have a motion to receive his update and uh, question and answer for information, Councillor Rice. I receive uh, uh, the Honourable Wayne Drysdale's report for information. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for vote. Uh, the second delegation was the, the presentation to Mr. Lacusta. Uh, I don't know if we need a motion to receive that for information since we're making the presentation. Um, the next delegations uh, related to uh, the Derek Taylor uh, parking lot issue. Uh, there was a request um, made, um, two parts. The first was that uh, the um, school be allowed to use the portables in advance of the parking, which we heard uh, from Mr. Learners is happening. Um, the second part was that the city uh, grants some flexibility with regards to the development permit and the establishment of those stalls. So um, council has an opportunity to give direction to administration here. Uh, Councillor Rice. I, I would move we uh, give direction to administration to allow use of the, the portables immediately. And, and that we advise our administration to work closely with them to come up with a solution, a flex, show flexibility in dealing with this. I think uh, what I heard from the first delegation, the request was to, uh, maybe a better way to say it, direct administration, uh, provide some flexibility to work with the Grand Prairie Public School Board uh, in terms of location of uh, Okay. Need for additional parking stalls on site. Yeah. Okay. You got that, Audrey? So, so that uh, basically gives would give our city administration the go ahead to say work with the school board and to find a solution that would be acceptable uh, to the neighborhood. The expectation, of course, would be that the school board, as the developer, would be uh, engaging the neighbors and the residents in that decision. Um, and. Uh, but this essentially says that the city is not uh, requiring the school board to abide by that development permit. Um, we're looking for alternate solutions. Uh, so that motion is in order. Open for discussion debate. Councillor McLean. Uh, thank you, Mayor Given. I've heard of quite a few discussion as well on about speed limits. And when I sat on community safety for the first year, there was a motion I brought forward in this council directed to go to AUMA. So I don't know if this is directed to Councillor Rice or to the Director Horatio uh, about uh, speed fines doubling in school zones, just like in construction sites. I'd like to know where that's at, and maybe we can't get that information tonight. But uh, it was brought, spoke of on behalf of our mayor, given at one of the AUMAs in Edmonton, and now it's out there yeah. wherever. But uh, it was concerned about. Uh, uh, speed limits and maybe they're in a special area. So I know working towards administration, I hope they're looking at speed limits in certain areas if the community brings it forward to the next council. And as well, I'm very interested on the double, double like for speeding, you get double fines in school zone. So I'd like to know where that's at. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor McLean. Um, is there a specific request in there? 
Well, if they know now and if they don't, they can get back to us on it. Okay. So we'll ask administration to follow up on that. Councillor Wong. Thank you, Mayor Given. I believe the motion is highly appropriate. I think that uh, unless you can, city council can't stop parking lots from going onto school sites, and that's kind of the the only authority that we are looking at. at sorry, I'm having a hard time wording this. It's been a long day. Um, that's the level of authority that we would have, um, and you can't do that as a broad stroke across the city. So. Um, the motion is to allow flexibility in that development permit, and that development permit would be site specific. So uh, basically what we'd be telling administration is that if um, another site was chosen, they could just apply the permit for that other site. And then we'll leave it up to the school board and the school to, to determine what is an appropriate site as, as they consult with the public. As we all know, the school boards are also elected just like we are. We shouldn't really be getting in their business, especially since we've already allowed them to exist within our city. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Uh, any further discussion or debate on the motion? Councillor McLean. Councillor Wong, but also this new school that's six years old, half the capacity is in modular now, so it so really changed the outlook of speed in that area and outcome of residents getting in and out. And I understand not stepping on the school board's uh, decision, but now this is going full circle and it'll go back to the province. And so I understand where you're, you're heading at that, but also this is like double the capacity in the school. We got size of schools and modulars. So it's really changed the outlook in this area. So I think it's uh, important on council to uh, look at other uh, directives as well. Okay, thanks, Councillor McLean. Councillor Crogan. Thanks, Mary Given. And uh, once the new school opens, there are an awful lot of those students and teachers and um, traffic may be from that area. So they'll see a lot less, but we can't determine that until they get their registration and find out where they live and the, and the uh, enrollment area. So I'm, I'm confident that uh, it will drop down because there's a new school in that area. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Crokin. Any further discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, I believe, oh, there was one other delegation, South Peace Ball. Uh, they made a presentation, um, and we did deal with that item, but they made a presentation. I think we probably should receive it for information. If somebody care to make that motion? Councillor... Councillor Crokin. Thank you very, thank you very much, Mayor Gillen. I move that we uh, receive the South Peace Ball Association's um, report for information. Thanks very much, Councillor Crokin. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. I believe that handles all of our delegation business. We had no notices of motion, and uh, uh, council members said that they had uh, no reports or any of the reports that they had from the agencies, boards, and commissions that were on, they would handle in roundtable. And so we'll start the final roundtable of the council term. Um, to my uh, far right with um, Councillor Wong, and then we'll go to Councillor Gustafson in a round. Councillor Wong. Thank you, Mayor Given. September 17th, I brought greetings on behalf of Council and the Mayor to the grand opening of Cora's restaurant on South 40. It's going to be a great addition to uh, the city. I think that uh, there's already been massive lineups there. I know that last week I was assigned to line up for some friends of mine, and I was there for about an hour with a bunch of other people before we got through those doors. Um, also on September 17th, I attended the uh, municipal, inter-municipal government meeting with uh, other members of council. September 18th, I attended the uh, council committee of the whole strategic priorities chart review. September 20th, uh, other members of council were also present at the municipal government board annexation preliminary hearing. Uh, it's good to see that process finally uh, get underway. Uh, I was a little disappointed that a bunch of residents there were uh, either misinformed or had lack of information about the annexation. And these are people that live in the annexation area. I think there were a few of us who were talking with those residents and dispelling a bunch of uh, myths that they, or misconceptions that they had. Uh, 
September 20th, I was also at City Hall uh, at an election night telecast meeting. I will be the official analyst and commentator for the uh, election night results. So hope to see a lot of friendly faces walk through that door after the election. Uh, September 23rd, I was at uh, Dukes and Mingles on Main for the announcement that the Sawmill Restaurant will be opening in the spring of 2014 in that location. Great to see that as well. Uh, September 26th, I was at a Wapiti Corridor Planning Society meeting. It was basically a wrap-up meeting. Uh, we, it's been a long process. We've taken five years to finally create this land use plan that uh, is pretty much ready to be submitted to the provincial government. We're, we've planned one last meeting after the final final draft is, is uh, printed, which is happening right away. Um, can't wait. That's been a long time in my life. Um, we did we did that right from scratch. I, I think I got suckered in by uh, by the by the reeve of the county. Um, she basically said, "Hey, do you you like running in the county of Grand Prairie, right? We should we should talk about these trails and and some recreation down there." So she shuffled me off to this meeting, and five years later, a lot of work has been done. But uh, council is going to going to be really proud of the plan that was created. Uh, what else? Oh, later that day, I was also at another election night telecast meeting. I still have a few more of those. We're, we're preparing all the new technology and, and, uh, Fred Rennie and I are kind of getting all our background information together. So it should be a good night. Uh, September 27th, I was at the kickoff for the Alberta culture days. And finally today it's on September 30th. It was another council committee of the whole meeting. Thanks very much. Councillor Wong. Councillor Gustafson. Thanks, Mayor Given. Well, another chapter's closed. This is the last time you guys are going to hear me complain or do anything here. As, as, as we close this uh, final term, I'd, I'd really take, like to take this opportunity to thank um, my family and my charming wife for, for allowing me the opportunity to be a, an alderman and a councillor. Um, you know, I'd like to thank CLT, uh, David Ollinger, thanks for your time, especially in the, in the first term, helping me out there, and Gary Roth, uh, Greg Sherback, uh, Mr. Anderson, and uh, Mrs. Ferguson has really, uh, really been near and dear to my heart over the, over the past six years, and uh, especially you guys around the table here. Most, most people don't realize the, uh, how, much, how much commitment and how much you, you guys' heart is really in building and creating a great place to live, and 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 on that, I, in the next term, as you guys get re-elected, I'm I'm hoping you spend some time focusing on our uh, transportation networks, our roads, and our uh, fixing our roads. And you heard tonight about our schools. Some uh, really spend some time on on concentrating on our our educational needs for our future. And Mayor Gibbon, thank you for for being such a good mayor. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Councillor Gustafson. Councillor Rice. Tough act to follow. Uh, I attended the intermunicipal meeting as well. I think it was one of the best intermunicipal meetings. I, I think the true spirit of cooperation uh, amongst the region was very evident uh, that night. Attended the uh, announcement at Mingles of the sawmill coming to Grand Prairie, and it's uh, always a pleasure when people have decided to make a significant investment in our community. Uh, I attended the uh, Peace River uh, Community Advisory Committee uh, luncheon where they brought us up to date on, on uh, that project. And I attended the Chamber of Commerce mixer at the new Atco building, which uh, until then I had no idea of the, the variety of services that they provide for all of Alberta out of that building. It's, it's very impressive. And uh, I attended the uh, Alberta Culture Days kickoff uh, with Minister Klimchuk. Uh, and I attended the 20-year anniversary of Victoria's Attic where Councillor Red Gustafson got to show off his barbecuing skills. So uh, I want to say that uh, it's uh, it, both uh, Councillor Wong and Councillor Gustafson will be missed. Their contribution uh, to this council has been huge. 
Uh, I also point out that uh, the Alberta, um, Alberta Recycling Management Authority has allocated a million dollars in funding for the Municipal Assistance Program. So that will be for the next year. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Councillor Crokin. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. On the September 17th, I attended the Pursuit of Excellence meeting. Uh, later that day, I attended the intermunicipal uh, meeting at the County Games Arena. Very, very good meal put on by the, uh, the hosts there. On September the 18th, I attended uh, Big Brothers and Big Sisters Barbecue downtown. And later, the Strategic Priorities meeting. And then later, again, the uh, Canadian Home Builders Association GP Mixer at our service centre. And uh, I ended up having a, a friend when I won the prize. Isn't that something? On the 19th, I attended the United Way campaign kickoff luncheon at uh, Matt Hatter's. At, and then on the 19th, I attended the ATCO ribbon cutting uh, grand opening. And there were some nice door prizes there. And they sent me away with one. And on the 20th, uh, I also attended the Salon A in the Pomeroy Hotel, the annexation um, meeting and hearing. And later that day, I ended up at the Showcase Center, uh, wine and cheese there it was uh, very good. Uh, on the 22nd, I attended uh, a funeral for a great city builder and a father of one of our counselors, Ernie Radburn. Uh, on the 23rd, I attended a meeting with the city manager review, and uh, then at lunch we attended the uh, Peace Country Community Advisory for Enbridge uh, luncheon and meeting. That was a very good eye-opener for uh, all people concerned. Then later, of course, on the 23rd was on Mingles at Maine and met the owner that's going to be putting the sawmill downtown. And 26th, I, I was also at the ATCO again. There was a mixer, and uh, somehow I got another door prize. On the 27th, I attended uh, the Alberta Culture Days kickoff at the Provincial Building. And I'm telling you, we got some talent in town. There was dancing from one, two, three, four different groups, uh, and uh, they, they really showed off their stuff. The uh, 27th, uh, later that day, whoa, that was at lunchtime. The, uh, um, Candace Kira had, had, uh, asked me to stop to the, at the ATB 75th year celebration on Kateri Drive, and I, I didn't really want to go there for lunch, but I did stop in. And on the uh, 28th, I also uh, attended the ribbon cutting for 20, year, 20 years of Victoria's Attic downtown. And uh, congratulations, Alec, to your wife. Uh, I'm sure you don't buy too much in there. But then on the 29th, I uh, attended a, a barbecue downtown or in the Muskocee Park in our jewel for the Grand Prairie District Labor Council in support of communities homeless and unemployed. It was uh, a, an awful lot of people there. It was well attended. And then today also I attended the community uh, committee of meeting of the whole. And I do have some roses and raspberries. The roses, I have been, I've been told by a number of people that our, our paving and our sidewalks probably has been the best uh, that they have seen. The weather, of course, has been in our favor. And we do that with limited resources, I might add. And uh, my raspberries will go to Highway 43, the potholes that I mentioned a little earlier to uh, Minister Drysdale. That, uh, it is in the city of Grand Prairie, but uh, it's not our responsibility. So if we could help them in any way, we do have some great staff. We could fix that for them real easy. And with that, I'd just like to say I really enjoyed my three years uh, with all of you. Looking forward to seeing you on the uh, next term. That's everything. Mayor Gibbon. Thanks very much, Councillor Croton. Councillor Monroe. Thanks, Mayor Given. On the 17th, uh, I attended a Nighthawk Recreation Area board meeting. Um, uh, not a lot to report there, except that uh, the, the Nighthawk area, I mean, a lot of our equipment is getting up in age these days. So the maintenance costs associated with maintaining, you know, the lifts and all the equipment out there is, is becoming fairly difficult to manage. And I uh, uh, just wanted everyone to be aware of that because I'm sure there'll be more coming uh, soon.
doing on that. On the 18th, I quickly att attended uh, uh, the uh, Guten Penselin DVD release party uh, at the uh, Little Theatre, and that was, uh, um, she's uh, into herbal pharmacy medicines and stuff, and uh, uh, seemed really quite unique, actually. There was quite a few people there to, to take it in, and alternative medicine. Uh, couldn't stay for the full... Uh, Full event as I was uh, off to the Canadian Home Builders Association mixer uh, hosted by our service centre. Uh, once again, good to see the home builders there. And then after that, I went and took a, in the uh, citizen satisfaction survey at uh, the Teresa Sargent Hall. Uh, good turnout there and uh, some excellent feedback uh, in regards to the survey that had been done a couple months earlier. Uh, I guess also that day I was at the Big Brothers uh, and Big Sisters barbecue uh, uh, downtown. Uh, one of the more expensive lunches I've had because Vernon Boyd hit me up for a hundred dollar ticket on the WestJet Fly Anywhere lottery thing. So, anyways, maybe I'll win a trip out of it. I'm not sure. On the 19th, uh, attended the United Way kickoff uh, at Mad Hatter's, and uh, uh, wow, they are really setting the target high this year. $1.3 million is the goal, uh, and uh, wow, I, ho I hope they make it. So, uh, they had great momentum last year, and I'm sure they'll be able to do it uh, this year. Also, attended the ribbon cutting at uh, Echo Electric. On the 20th, attended the uh, Municipal Government Board annexation preliminary hearing. Uh, and then on the 22nd, uh, went uh, and took in the AIDS walk down in Muscacipi Park and actually walked the two-kilometer walk with a, with a number of folks there and a beautiful day for a walk around the park. Uh, 23rd, uh, went to the Enbridge Peace Country Community Advisory Board lunch. Uh, and uh, later on that day, uh, uh, was also present at uh, Mingles Down on May, uh, and uh, congratulations to Tom Goodchild, and uh, look forward to him opening up the new sawmill. Uh, and on the 26th, attended the poverty, Provincial Poverty Reduction Strategy, uh, just the morning part of that, and got a glimpse into what that strategy is. And then later on that day, I was at the Chamber of Commerce Mixer, also out at the ATCO uh, building. That's it. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Monroe. Councillor O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. On the 17th, I attended the 100th Anniversary uh, Committee. Uh, we had a bunch of people around the table talking about all the projects they're working on. And uh, my project is to get uh, events for most of the year. So it's coming along pretty good. Uh, at 5 o'clock, I uh, set out a bag of food for the Rotary Food Bank uh, collection. And uh, it's gone, so it's going somewhere. Uh, Intermunicipal Government Day at, uh, later that night. Uh, like it was said earlier today, most of the council was there, and it was a very well-run uh, uh, meeting with lots of good discussion. On the uh, 18th, I attended the Combative Sports Commission. We had our uh, uh, discussion regarding the promoter and uh, overturned the decision. Uh, later on, we had had the, the strategic priorities chart here at City Hall, and we went over our priorities for the next uh, four months, three months for sure. Uh, later that night, uh, uh, I also attended with uh, Councillor Monroe a Good Run Penciling DVD release. Uh, and while we were there, uh, we also got a tour of some of the upgrades to the Grand Prairie Live Theatre, including the sound and lighting and some of the additions that they did to the building itself. Uh, once again, didn't stay there as long as I wanted to be, but uh, we had the Canadian Home Builders Mixer at the Service Centre, attended the uh, Citizen Satisfaction, and on the 19th, I had the Airport Commission meeting some of the topics of discussion there were the traffic lights that uh, was announced and the airport master plan. We reviewed some of those. Uh, we got to have a quick look at the employee policy manual and uh, capital plan and financial report. Uh, on the, what else we got? Ribbon cutting ceremony at uh, the ATCO uh, later that day. And hang on. And uh, on the 20th, 
I attended the South Peace Regional Archives strategic planning event. It was an all day affair and we've got some uh, good ideas out there on where we want to go with the whole uh, archives uh, program. I was at, uh, on here. Oh, it wasn't there. Sorry, I'm trying to get this high techy stuff and then I upgraded my computer and shouldn't have done that. Um, where are we at here? The, uh, on the, on the 23rd, I was down here at City Hall to start the campaign for the next four years. Got to meet some of the people that are also running, uh, not only for the city council, but, uh, the school boards as well. And, uh, we did the, uh, announcement at the uh, Mingles on Main once again. And I was at the, on the 26th, I was at the Provincial Poverty Reduction. I spent the t entire day there. It was quite interesting to see how different areas of the community feel about what needs to be done and who should be addressing it. Uh, later that evening, I uh, attended the Primary Care Network and it was held at the Paradise Inn and Conference Center. And it was basically to showcase some of the uh, agencies that uh, the doctors and uh, specialists deal with on a regular basis. And uh, it was a, an eye opener, some of the stuff that we do look after uh, and the agencies and some of the programs that they actually uh, offer. Cultural days on the 27th, I also was at the provincial building in the Fourier. And uh, once again, hats off to the talent that was there. And uh, that was great. Got the uh, Mayor Klimchuk, or sorry, MLA and Minister Klimchuk, Culture Minister, uh, was there giving greetings. And also Mayor Given did an excellent speech. And that was great. Um, and basically, that was pretty much it. I did attend the Victoria's Attic. Uh, ribbon cutting ceremony for 20 years in business in the downtown and congratulations. And once again, it's been a great three years. I enjoyed every minute of it. Some decisions were pretty tough to make. Some were pretty easy to make. And uh, at the end of the day, I appreciate working with each and every one of you, both councillors and administration and the people that deal with the city on a regular basis. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Um, September 19th, Airport Commission meeting, 22nd, AIDS Walk Proclamation, 23rd, uh, Council Committee of the Whole, uh, and then the evening or in the late afternoon, Duke Sawmill announcement. Uh, 25th, I went to the Evergreen Park sponsorship announcement and the Grand Prairie Regional Tourism Association kiosk unveiling. Uh, 26th, Provincial Poverty Reduction presentation and discussion. Uh, for part of the day, and then I went to the Primary Care Network panel presentation and the Chamber Mixture at Coelectric. 27th, I went to Spirit River for a Grand Spirit Foundation Management Committee. And on the 28th, uh, it was my honour to uh, participate in the ribbon cutting for Victoria's Attic 20th anniversary. And just to uh, very quickly at, uh, to close, uh, thank you to each of you who took the time to come to Dad's Celebration of Life and to support me, myself, and my family. And especially to Councillor Rice for participating in that celebration of life. And finally, it's been an honor to represent the citizens of Grand Prairie the last uh, three years. And it's been a pleasure to serve with my colleagues and with city staff. And I wish everyone the best of luck and I encourage everyone to get out to vote. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Given. September 17th, I uh, chaired the Pursuit of Excellence uh, Committee. And I just want to say thank you, Mayor Given, for making me chair of that committee. I learned an awful lot on that committee. On September 17th, I was also involved in an inter-municipal government meeting. September 18th, I was also a council committee as a whole, strategic priority chart review. September 18th, I was also at the Canadian Home Builder Association uh, mixer at the service center. September 18th, um, I was also at the Community Futures meeting. I do have one more next month, and I was glad because Councillor Radman brought up about the youth uh, entrepreneurship camp 
which we were rated number one in Canada three years in a row for entrepreneurship uh, city area. Um, September 19th, I was also at the, the grand opening of the new ACO electrical building. I believe it was an $80 million building. And what I want to say about that, I was talking to one of the, the bosses and they said they built this building. I said, this building, I would love to work in this building. Just the feeling as an employee. And he said, we built this to stop retention, to, to, to keep people within and to stay with us in the long term. And they built a beautiful building. September 20th, I was also at uh, the Pomeroy for the annexation um, open house, the first preliminary debate. Um, September 23rd, uh, I was also a, a city hall for council committee on uh, city management review. And I just want to say, Greg, you're a very good city manager, and I was very proud to work, work with you. And um, you've done a very, very good job. September 23rd, I also attended the Tech Center of the Peace Country Community Advisory Board on the Northern Gateway Pipeline. September 23rd, I was also at the, the grand opening of Joe's um, Dukes, which they'll have in six or eight months of the announcement of the Sawmill Restaurant. If you've ever eaten there, it is some of the best prime rib in Alberta. Uh, September 25th, I went to the Rising Above Barbecue. They were hoping to raise $100,000, and at the time when I left, it was around 20000 so I don't know if they got their goal. I, I hope they did. And I just want to say this has um, been one of the most respectful group I've ever worked with. And I got to live a dream. And it's a, a job I truly loved. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor McLean. Um, I won't report on any, any of the items I've attended uh, over the last little while. I would just take an opportunity to say uh, thank you very much uh, to my colleagues on council, uh, to administration, uh, for the work that we've done as a team, and I mean that both council and administration as a team over the course of the last three years. Uh, I think we've been engaged in uh, very foundational work that will ultimately be uh, beneficial to our community. Some of that's behind the scenes, uh, some of it's things that the general public won't see day in and day out, um, but I believe all of it uh, is stuff that we can be proud of. Uh, I know that I'm certainly proud of my term as mayor, and I'm very proud of the team that I had to serve with. Um, I think we accomplished a lot, and I want to thank each and every one of you for that. I want to uh, say a special thanks and goodbye to Councillor Wong and Councillor Gustafson. It's been a pleasure to serve with both of you for the past six years. Um, I'm not sure that everybody in the public realizes the dedication uh, that it takes to uh, commit to council, and uh, each of you have put in a significant amount of time and adjusted your lives accordingly, and uh, certainly appreciate you doing that and wish you the best as you uh, refocus on the rest of your life. Uh, and we know that uh, the city will always be close to your hearts, and we appreciate the commitment that you've made to, uh, to our community over the past near decade. So thanks very much uh, with that, uh, with those words of thanks. And then thanks also to the community for the opportunity to represent you. Uh, I'll close this last council meeting of this term. Thanks very much.